Hello and welcome to the Norsecast. This is a anime fan podcast where we go through each film by Studio Ghibli and give it the talk and the analysis uh, that's uh, that they deserve. And uh, okay. I am Platon Skull, and I will be uh, the moderator for this episode, where we're going to talk about Isao Takahata's Only Yesterday. And uh, with me, I have, of course, uh, Nyad. Hey, I'm not going to be a moderator today. I'm freed of my duties. Finally, someone competent in yes. that role. Well, uh, l- l- we'll see about that. Um, <laughs> Wah! Oh, and, right. uh, that noise uh, came from Jubes. <laughs> Hi, I am Jubes. I'm new. I've never been recorded before. Whoops. <laughs> I hope that I can say something cool. Well, you'll, you'll do just fine, I think. And uh, of course, the one and only Hipster Cthulhu. Yes, it's me. It's the most recurringest host on this podcast, <laughs> other than yours. Uh, you cannot get rid of me. I'm like a... Yep. A very bad case of fungal infection. Oh my god! <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So of course, uh, oh. we're talking about another uh, movie that's not by Hayao Miyazaki, but is still excellent. Which most of those are made by Isao Takahata. Only Yesterday is a uh, 1991 uh, animated film. Uh, Isao Takahata wrote and directed. You'll remember him from Grave of the Fireflies. And if you're a real nerd, some stuff from the 70s. Um, it's uh, based and on... some a, stuff from the 80s as well? Yeah, the 80s as well. He was a, he was a really big deal, and uh, he, uh, he will be missed. Um, Rip. Yeah, rest in peace. Uh, anyway, it's uh, based on a uh, manga by the same name, uh, the Japanese title being Omoi de Poroporo, which uh, means memories trickling down or drizzling like basically like what raindrops do memories doing what yeah, raindrops do because because poro poro is an onomatopoeia like yeah. the japanese like to do yeah they, they have it for everything uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah even for silence anyway um so the the manga the original manga uh, was a uh, uh, is from 1982 uh, so eight years before this movie came out it's um a collection of short stories about the 11 year old girl named taiko and her childhood experience in 1966. But in adapting the story for film, uh, Takahata wrote a uh, framing device, uh, a story about uh, Taiko, who's now an adult in her late 20s, uh, who goes on a like working vacation uh, to the countryside to work at an organic farm. And uh, here she falls in love with uh, country life and, of course, with a, a passionate, earnest farmer named Toshio. So, uh, only yesterday was like a really, it's, it's one of, uh, Studio Ghibli's big off box office successes. It was the highest grossing movie of the year in Japan, but it wasn't really, it, it didn't really, uh, cross over into the West until way later. It, it wasn't until 2016, oh, yeah. uh, after Takahata's final film, The Tale of Princess Kaguya had, uh, gotten him a lot of acclaim, uh, from Western audiences and critics. Uh, this that, is one of the rare cases yeah. where Germany was actually far ahead because the film, like, uh, I think it was the early 2000s, already got a German dub at that time and, like, the American and English audience mm-hmm. wasn't, like, exposed to it at all. It's very interesting yeah, that uh, this kind of division would happen. Yeah, so, so if, like, if, if, if you look it up on, like, IMDb, you'd be surprised to find, like, uh, you, you'd be surprised to find it's, like, I think it's Daisy Ridley in the lead role. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's Daisy Ridley <laughs> and Dev Patel. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's so anachronistic, to be honest, to think about, like, Daisy Ridley, like, uh, oh, Ray from Star Wars voicing Taiko. Yeah. It, it, it's really weird. Yeah, that, that was, like, uh, honestly, the dub, the dub isn't that bad, but I do feel the sub is, like, like actually exceptionally well voice acted in this movie oh, yeah. compared to even, like, other Ghibli movies, I'd say. That's an interesting bit about that anyways. And, uh, yeah, uh, speaking of uh, the uh, d- dubbing of uh, Only Yesterday, uh, there's, uh, there's an interesting thing there where in the... Uh, original Japanese mm. recording, uh, the dialogue for the present day scenes, uh, that is with adults, uh, uh, Taiko at the farm, were recorded ahead of time and then the animation was made to suit it. 
Um, yeah, they even video recorded, like both actors sat together on a table with a big ass microphone in the middle and it was video recorded. So the animators got uh, video recordings of the uh, voice actors, like even their body language and facial expressions and like their little uh, imperfections, like uh, clicking of the tongue and so on. And they worked that into the animation yes. to yeah, have it exactly. yes. super realistic. Which, which is why like, like you might find, like even if you don't know it, you notice it. And even if you don't notice it, your brain does. Like, like there's, yeah. there's something... <laughs> A, a bit more fluid, a bit more like natural and like adult about the way uh, the um, the present day scenes uh, are like animated, uh, and that's uh, very much thanks to to that uh, decision, which is very uh, it's quite unusual for Japanese animation, which usually have uh, has voice actors uh, dub over after the animation is done and f fitting their line reading into it. Yeah. Um, like it is done in the childhood exactly, scenes. Exactly. Like it is done in the childhood scenes, which yeah. therefore like feel much more traditional anime-ish, um, con conventional. And that so less realistic, more like kind of abstracted. And I yeah. would I would like to say cartoony, but not in a derisive way, because like everything about the style of the childhood scenes is much more uh, in the lines of like regular anime. Yeah, it's style. more stylized in that. And also we get like the backgrounds in the childhood scene that are all like pastel watercolors yes. that like fade away. Yeah, that's like the, all the buildings. That, that's uh, that's a really beautiful the, like the mist. image, like because like the, the, these like watercolors, like uh, non non naturalistic, like yeah, the way they fade away and the way they're sort of um, it it it's sort of just the idea of like this thing is brown uh, and stuff like that. So so. Whereas, like the um, the present day animation is has have really detailed backgrounds with really like gritty, oh, yeah. gritty coloring, and it, it it's another way to uh, that Takahata differentiates between yeah. the the memory mm -hmm. and the present day in a way that makes the experience much more easily digestible. Like even like you can instantly tell when there's a flashback and when we're back in the yeah. present day. The present day has some of the most overwhelmingly detailed and lovingly like constructed backgrounds. Like everything is like yes. wide angle shots, tons of nature, tons of like little details and flourishes everywhere. You can see like little raindrops on the flowers and every every little detail. While the past scenes are all extremely subjective. Everything is like faded out exactly this way, like a child would look at the things, like perceive it like the bare necessities. And the focus is much more on people and and how they like um and interacting mm -hmm. with people rather than the the ways in which people interact in and through nature in the present day, at least as the camera conveys it to us. Yeah, but I, I would still say like the way uh, the present day scenes, the interactions uh, between people in the present day scenes uh, feel a lot more like uh, true and nuanced than the uh, the, the past scenes, mm -hmm. where, where, where the um, the flashback scenes are um, a, a, a kind of like feel more like grounded and essential and like clear in a way like 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 it's clear what's what it's about what what they're Stuff talking about it. yeah yeah exactly. emotional tone is yeah. clearly conveyed like omissions are very clearly made like from from the complexity of the structure because it's a memory we are fading back to a very specific like emotional memory yeah Instead of yeah, like we even get scenes where like uh, Taiko's animation change, where she gets like those big doe eyes, and she's like imagining yeah. herself like as a movie star and all the, in the different parts. So like, even her past is like stylized in a sense to create more of a um, a melding of like her mind of the memories, yeah, and the actual memories themselves. Because the, like a memory is also comprised of like your emotions, like some like the some of the animations seem to be describing more of a feeling that Tycho had when oh, yeah. she was young, rather than like an actual physical memory of a person or something. The, yeah, this also includes a very uh, distinct difference that the past scenes all have these kind of uh, unrealistic stylistic flourishes. Like in one scene, Taiko like ascends the stairway into heaven and then flies through the air. And another scene, she imagines herself to being on the cover of like tons of magazines and so on. And in one scene, she comes back like getting a bad grade and like the camera focuses, zooms in really on the grade. And there's like, an, like a strip of light highlighting just that bad grade in math. Like all these kind of stylistic flourishes that are like, emphasizing some element of a scene or emphasizing an emotion which are completely absent in the present day scenes well not, not, completely, not completely but I, but I think right. I, I think we'll get to that uh, later but like I, I think uh, what we're getting at here is like the idea of memory and their connection to the present day even across like great distances of time and and great distances of like th uh, theme like 
we see mostly like school stuff uh like, like her, her, her classroom and classmates and um stuff she did around the house uh where like that, that that's pretty far away from the whole uh rural life that we get in the uh, present day scenes and i think like um uh, apart from like the very first flashback which was about how like she didn't have that countryside house her family went to which every uh every one of her classmates had uh that, that's yeah. that has a clear connection to like going on the vacation but yeah. like it so also establishes lovely. how like she she doesn't have any like special relationship to the countryside so i think yeah i think that just makes the decision to to write this uh this additional story this additional layer of the story much more interesting like what what was Takahata trying to like uh gain and add to the uh to the story that uh he felt wasn't there that i think that's oh, yeah. one of the big questions that's that's a great point like the idea that you would adapt a source material which is just a manga of these largely like uh not uh tied together like little stories or auto semi-autobiographical stories by the way of the mangaka which are like just childhood memories as they are like it's a kind of contemplative kind of thing but Takahara goes the next step and visions okay we want to frame this and th th his framing device became like an entire movie unto itself which just incorporates in a genius way these these memories and extrapolates what would this character like be like as an adult and if like cast into this world that like the 80s that Takahara has experienced uh, uh, is experiencing currently are or has experienced because it's of course 91 but like mm -hmm. the 80s are on his mind here yeah, I found the film to be like a very interesting like exercise in like child psychology and like m like more of a subtle one than I've seen in anything else where it's taking all these memories that Takahata like, you know, obviously there's a limited amount of the manga. So there's all these memories selected and he's picking out the ones and like imagining all these little subtle things that would like go on to be like complexes and like points of Taiko's personality when she's much older. So you take a little thing like she had kind of like a, a lame holiday in the countryside and now she kind of just wants to go back to the countryside she's like revisiting this unfulfilled need and there's all these things that keep on coming back around and like her memories stick with her is Ata media countryside like the the hot springs they went to um it's like outside of tokyo and they they kind of say they want to go to the country so i feel like it's it's more like that idea of like getting away yeah. from what she views as her normal life and mm -hmm. her position which is like a big theme of the movie about like Taiko feeling slightly trapped by the hegemony of like life in Tokyo and what's expected of her there, and she kind of tries to break away into the country. But but it's but it's also so lovely like the idea that we talked about a little bit earlier that she really wanted to have like a connection to the countryside because everyone else like went to uh, to the countryside on vacation, but she was like, "When are we gonna visit grandma on the countryside?" And her mom just replies, "We don't have a grandma on the countryside." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's such a like kid thing to do like like that. I, I I don't know. That's um, I'm, like I I I remember like uh I I have like some some gra grandparents uh f who who live in the countryside or what 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 the equivalent is in uh in Denmark, and uh, and like it's it's just like a like two hour two and a half hour drive uh from where we live in the city, um and I, I remember like my little sister when we were really little. And we're driving home from um, fr from a grandparent's house. She, um, after we we crossed the bridge, she asked, "Are we in Denmark now?" <laughs> like as though we'd left the country. <laughs> like as though, <laughs> though we'd, we'd been like really far away. <laughs> and and like, so it's, I don't know. It, it, yeah, the movie is like filled with these like small, little incidental bits of like trueness. Like the 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 childhood scenes are just like really really exact with like how kids that age uh might oh act, yeah I think. but also like this idea of like just for a second pretending like this kind of a grandma is also like core to this film kind of this idea of like uh i guess imagining and imagining yourself in a different role in a different position but also like the idea of fake it till you make it i think we're going to talk about this a lot more but this is going to come up again it's, it's oh, yeah. very interesting that it's always present in in her childhood memories from the very start yeah, her trying to pretend that things are different. It's like... <clears throat> like the pineapple scene. 
Yeah. Oh my god, legit like yeah, the pineapple scene. Like yeah, the, like the, every, what, what what about the pineapple scene? Uh that well, that's, that, that's an iconic yeah. one. Ah, oh, yeah. So in the pineapple scene, of course, she, she the, the whole family is kind of excited or interested in this new fruit that they brought about. And Taiko especially, like, oh, this is going to be special. A pineapple. They brought up in a pineapple. They never eaten a pineapple before. So yeah, they're all just new. confused, like, how do you slice it open? How do you cut it up? Like, all this build up and anticipation. And then you see, like, the careful, very deliberate animations made to slice open the pineapple. Fun fact, by the way, uh, Takahata was very dissatisfied with how the melon slicing, uh, melon like eating looked in Grave of the Fireflies. So this time around, <laughs> he, he made his uh, animation staff like slice actual pineapples in the animation studio just so they could get it right. <laughs> and it, it's, just, <laughs> it's just really good. It's oh, so that's good. a great the, detail. What, what makes these scenes so iconic is that I think like the pineapple they, they, they eat is not perfectly ripe yet. So they're all like exactly. eating it's, it's it's kind of it's green tough yeah. and it's... sour. And everyone is like, yeah, this, this is bad. And Taiko was like, I wanted this to be good. And she keeps pretending like it's great. And she like that eats more and more. Yeah. And you see these phenomenal facial animations of her like, face contorting as she's like experiencing the sourness and is disgusted and so on. And she just... Mm -hmm. troopers soldiers through it she's, she's yeah. just very intent on making this this work for her that the idea of the pineapple that she like wanted yeah. to be good like actually is good she she, she invests a lot of like emotional yeah. strength into that and it's it's almost like like it's it's, yeah. it's a really like uh not that central scene and but a lot of time spent on it and i think that's really interesting like it's almost it would almost be like a great little writing exercise like the characters you're writing what would their reactions look like if they were in this situation? Because every single like member of the family has a different one. Um, oh yeah, it's great. Like the two sisters giving her like their slices. You can have mine, mine too. And like the father is like setting it down. It's very matter like, of fact. are looking yeah. very stern, and he like gets out a cigarette to smoke. <laughs> the mother immediately well, my starts. Favorite, sad, my favorite yeah. thing is away. from the uh, the grandma who who kind of like just finds an interest in it. Like even in her own age. She's kind of like amazed that all these new things can be coming to her. So she appreciates it like the most out of anyone. Yeah, and pineapples were actually like pretty new mm -hmm. uh, to Japan in the 60s. Uh, like uh, it's, a, uh, it's originally from uh, South America and it's, it's a native plant to South America. Uh, and of course, like uh, the, the US was like first yeah. to like pick, mm. pick that shit up and uh, start growing it. And I, th I think it's a big thing in Hawaii. Uh, I think they grow yeah. it a lot there. Um, yeah. which so, yeah, yes. yeah, obviously yes, it's not really fruit, easy yeah. to get a hold of in Japan yeah. in like uh, the Second World War. Of course. Yeah. Um, Bring up yeah. USA is very interesting here because yeah, obviously it's kind of like a result of US trade relations. Exactly. And I think US, the USA is kind of like lingering over this film, like in pr presence. Well, in, 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 because, in so oh, yeah. far as it lingers over like all culture in the, in the 60s and yeah. in the... In uh, the True, but world. we have like explicit reference of like American, yeah. like uh, and uh, well, no, not the American strictly, like beat music coming over, right? This is British, but also like the the pop culture and yeah. is coming over, like the 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 young people are f obsessed over it and fussing over it, and like the uh, Taiko's sister gets very obsessed and invested into it, but also like and this is where we get into like the the other aspect, like the creeping corporate culture of of Japan that we will experience in when we go to the eighties. Oh yeah, that's that's an interesting observation. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Another thing, like I wanted to mention about the pineapple, is it it, uh, it used to be like a huge status symbol, like when it was first like discovered and brought to Europe, uh, like uh, kings and noblemen and uh, rich merchants, they wanted that they they wanted that pineapple and they wanted to like be painted next to a pineapple because that was such a status symbol to be able to have this exotic, great, amazing fruit. Yeah, and it was like rare and expensive. And like today, and like also kind of like in the sixties, it's it's like so common uh, that, that that like we don't really think about how like people just yeah. spring some people just sprinkle it on pizza and other people get mad at it. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah. This is this is also I think it was juxtaposed like when she goes in present day eighties through the market, there are pineapples everywhere. There's pineapples and bananas there at all times. Yeah, yeah. Ex yeah that, that, that's a great transition as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this, interesting. It's just. This movie's just filled with like these good small little connections that yeah. make the flashbacks and present day scenes go together. It's interesting because like yeah, it, like yeah, like a uh, a pineapple was a status symbol back then, but it's really the status symbols have just changed. There's different things that communicate to people of your of your station in like the modern day, but like 
And it's it's cool how they they, they flip between those two, between the past and the present. Yeah. But I I think the whole thing with like a luxury fruit as an everyday just incidental little disappointment. No. I think that's uh, I think that points to like how her childhood's like it's not really like such a sad childhood. It's an interesting childhood to like to to form a, an entire story around. Oh yeah. Because it's not like she has any big trauma or any yeah, but like, it's kind of like an range of mildly disappointing events. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, like, like it's there's like they're so either many incidental occurrences. incidental or like disappointing or just yeah. like exacerbating. Like, was so disappointing that she went from bath to bath and kept bathing, and then like, she because it was too out. much for her, she lost consciousness. She passed out. Yeah, uh, or like the 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 moment where she for a moment thought she could become a star because like someone from a college wanted her to to play act. Yeah, or and, the and the where she didn't get the the purse from her sister, or there was this huge fuss. Like these mildly disappointing like little things. Mm-hmm. But to a kid, like those mean the world. You know, like that's. That's that's an interesting thing that I'm not sure if they comment on too much, but like, it, to a kid, like we like we as adults, we look back on the things. Those these are incidental, mildly disappointing, even. But to a kid, yeah. they mean everything. She wants that purse. It's a symbol. It's 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 showing that she's a little bit older, right? She's a little bit old. She doesn't have the dumb flower purse anymore. She has this enamel purse instead. This means a lot to her, even though it seems so tiny and weird and yeah. substantial now. Yeah, like I think it, this is like the most important thing these memories can do. Like they can take us back and realize kind of like the things we've constructed in how we view the world, what is important, what isn't important. And to go back to a point where it was entirely different and we looked at life in a sort of different way still. still. Yeah, I, mm. I, I think that's like the closest thing to a through line in the, uh, in the flashback scenes is the idea of like uh, valuing something uh being disappointed or like being seen as disappointing in some way and uh that, like e- e- every single one has like this unresolvedness to it uh at the end that that, that lingers into the present day scenes and i th- i i guess you could see it as like the story of uh taiko learning to let go of all the little frivolous things and also, like, find that something that doesn't disappoint. That's something that, like, lives up to what she hoped it would be. Which, in this case, yeah. just happens to be organic farming. Yeah, that's something that got lost in the process of her between her being 10, or 10 years old and her becoming a 27-year-old adult who's getting yeah. hassled by mother to finally marry, who's in a corporate job that she doesn't love. Yeah. Did anyone catch mm-hmm. what, what was her job? Like, uh, um, there was a, a few quick... Shut. I think I think it looked like advertisement or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looked uh, like layout. Layout. We, n- we never actually told her job, and I think this is actually a really nice part. It's a very nice part of the film because um, the, the like the opening bit of the film, we see Tokyo, but it's all like these like abstract shapes. They're all like glass and concrete blocks, and then we get all these shots of just people hands working at computers like phones ringing fax machines moving like it's a completely like dehumanized environment where like no one is like proud of their labor or connected to it and then the film like takes great pains to show us every stage of making the the safflower and the rouge from it and how much like joy and like community is brought from this labor there's like a, there's like an incredible disparity between these the film paints and it, and it and it uh, so her job I think is something advertising or layout because there's one like scene where you see like a sheet of paper where there's some scribbles on it which looks like a layout at first I thought mm-hmm. it was like a storyboard but it's not a storyboard it's a layout um and yeah absolutely hipster you're correct this is like this depiction of the organic farm work is done in so much detail like all the farm work consists of is like a family and friends who work together who smile at each other working who have this really close experience to the plant life really nurturing it it's talked extensively about how careful and how natural the kind of this process is of not doing it like any chemicals then there's this amazing scene i think this is what i want to tie it into like this well, how Taiko still retains kind of this element of her childhood, where she, when she first enters the field to pick the safflower, she takes off her glove and like the internal monologue yes. says something along the lines of, um, back in the day, the workers didn't have any gloves. So the woman who pr- uh, picked the flowers got pricked on the thorns of the, of the flower. And this is why yeah. the, the, the dye turns red. This is like kind of the myth 
the mythology behind it. And she took off her gloves to see how it feels, to kind of tap into this authenticity and to relate to this kind of experience and to make it kind of authentic, to make have a new like connection to this. And this is what she does very often. She imitates behavior in order to connect and understand certain behaviors. But this is very close to the idea of pretending to like the pineapple, right? You you try to have this experience. Yeah, and yeah, there's there's that's the one of the major things, and it's like clearly um, Tycho's main complex throughout the film yeah. is her like vision of herself as a pretender and how she doesn't kind of like deserve or like belong in this place, and then that's why the whole thing comes up with like the bully at the end, and there's that whole thing where like yeah, we kind of resolves that. Well, yeah, we can get it to all that kind later. of compounds. It. Yeah, but it definitely all kind of compounds on each other. Um, it honestly, like, I mean, you, you can you can tie so many parallels. There's so many there's so many things that Tycho does where like she's just subconsciously mimicking someone or something. She and and something that I thought was interesting is she's not only mimicking like you know, like the the authentic feel of like the Sapphire. She's in a way, trying to be a little bit more authentic than the farmers, because the farmers are using gloves. She wants it's it's in like a it's in a weird way. She wants to be even more authentic than the people who live there by trying to do it with her bare hands. But it's even shown how that's not even effective. She only gets like a little bit of the tuft of the flower, and then the 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 other people like mention her. Hey, you got to put your gloves back. But on. also, no yeah, definitely. Yeah, you see, it's, like, uh, it's more. Efficient. It's the same thing actually with like the whole organic farming thing. Uh, well, we have Toshio talking about how, like, oh, it's it, it it's old school, it's hard, yes. but like it, it's it's definitely worth it, and it's better for the environment and stuff like that. But like, they still use pesticides. Like, they're not like that yeah. romantic. Like, they 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 still have to like use these modern tools to some extent in order because like not every bit, not every step forward is a step away from authenticity necessarily. Yes, exactly. Oh yeah, that that's a hugely important one. We gotta keep in mind that organic farming is a new development. It is not a return to how things were. It is a new development of how to nurture plants. It is a different that's but true. still new approach. Like it is not something like that is unscientific or backwards oriented. This is very important for me to stress because uh, we're going to have this discussion later on, I think, but there is like a discussion to be had to which extent this movie like espouses the virtues of tradition versus how much it is actually like opposing it, uh, looking at it from a different angle and perspective and taking a, a, let's say, more examined stance on the virtues of the past and uh, community and rural life. Exactly. Uh, but one thing yeah. we at least can say about organic farming is it's, I think, uh, and like, hear me out, uh, don't like, um, so I think Isao Hada might like organic farming. He might th think it's pretty no. cool. I, I I have a feeling like that he likes the he he likes the countryside. Are and you kidding me? Organic farming. It's just not, a feeling I get from something. watching this movie. Mm. Maybe oh, it's I, I take so everything sure back. That. Platon is not the host anymore. He's just <laughs> lying to you now. Th this doesn't work. Ah, damn it! <laughs> Come on, it, it was just a thought. I mean, no, but, but seriously, like Toshio has uh, like a couple of like pretty long uh, monologues about like what's happening out there. It's almost like documentary ish, and especially like yeah. the whole process of creating the uh the, the safflower dye is just it, it it's yeah it's basically like a a documentary about like how all this stuff works but like set to gorgeous animation um yeah i love how um toshino is like a complete organic farming uh otaku yeah, like yeah, in yeah. all of his mannerisms in the way that like she's just talking to him about something else and then he just breaks into a, like an espousal about organic farming and how important it is <laughs> like completely apropos of nothing in the conversation but it's just all he's thinking about here's the great thing like the idea of like pretending is so applicable for toshio as well because yeah, what yeah. we learn about toshio is that he himself has like been like wanting yes. to go to university in tokyo and he couldn't like really manage and then he like said oh cool organic farming is pretty cool and then he got into it and then and now, whenever he's talking like very passionately about organic farming, he's like repeating words his friends said, or he's reciting a poem that he read the last day, and he's so self-aware about it. He's like uh, snickering whenever he's like kind of found out, and he, he tells Taiko like, "Yeah, I heard this yesterday," or whatever. This is what my friend says. Like he's kind of into it, but he's kind of kind of like pretentiously into it, right? He's he's kind of like 
He's, he's playing that up a bit. Yeah. And it's there, very there's cool. a lot of LARPing going on yes. in this movie. He I do laughs agree. at yeah, himself it's... many times about like, um, you know, I'll, I'm just copying my friend. I, that was a quote that my friend said. Or you know, you read this poem. It's, oh wait, oh I forgot. I only learned that yesterday. You know what? This is like he belongs on a best best boys three by three. Oh, super yeah, he's, best he's boy. So great. He's, he's so super nice. Best. His laugh is the best part. Yeah. yeah. D- just like I think like the um the laughter is like really where the animation style and like the the whole the way they recorded it really pays off because it just feels yes. so genuine when these characters yeah. smile or laugh. Uh, like part of it is like the the uh, the dimples they have, like the the, yeah. the face ah, scrunches yes. up. That's uh, that's something like Takahata obviously like really yeah. wanted to. And the wide include. wide shit eating grins, it's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. the grins are so goofy. Everyone everyone in Kansai is grinning. Like when she first comes and like the Hungarian music is playing very loud, everyone is just <laughs> grinning like crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so almost good. like it's, yeah. It's I really so... feel like the faces in this movie are maybe like they're definitely like the most like subtle attempts to do like anime faces I've maybe ever seen because like mm-hmm. instead of going very detailed like some other animators would uh Takahata keeps the designs very simplistic with like very low like amounts of lines on them but like he manages to capture like so much subtlety like the way that like Taiko is 27 but she kind of has those cheeks that would make her look older like you can think of people yes. who like look older than they should be because of features and the way that um, yes. Toshino like kind of his age almost changes when he laughs like he looks like a young man but when he laughs yeah. he kind of like looks older like the way you get yes. those features on some people so it's like so incredibly subtle and uh, unbelievably like thought out yeah it's it, it's, it's an old like uh, thing in like drawing and animation like uh, the more the, each line you add to a an animated face adds like five years. <sighs> yeah, that's true. No, seriously, like like more lines equal they look older. Yeah, which is exactly why like if you look at some like shitty '90s comics, uh, <laughs> like superhero comics, where like they have an insane amount of lines to make them extra gritty, but they just look like they're sixty. <laughs> Yeah, everyone, this, this in, is, everyone in a lo- Rob Liefeld yeah, story looks like they're about eighty the years old. Yeah. But this is also why babies in animation infamously don't have faces and are just like colorful blobs. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah, they well, they have a few dots. <laughs> they they yeah. don't have lines; they have dots. <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in fucking Kaguya Hime, they do. Like that's just literally oh, yeah. what it is. That, There's yeah. balls of that's pudding right. with with eyes on it. Yeah, well, it's that's pretty accurate, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, but like, like it's um I, I think it's a, an example of how the animation in uh in only yesterday isn't really all that flashy at all like it, it, it's not no. like you'd instantly go like oh put that shit on sakugaboru uh a, a, as you might do with some of the uh action sequences in uh, Miyazaki's work but oh, yeah. like it does have some genuinely impressive and subtle animation like I'm thinking specifically of there was this shot of the car just driving like towards the camera and around a corner and it's yeah. so with the with its uh headlights on and it's so yeah. incredibly impressive if you like realize like how they had to like draw that like traditional animation like it's no yes. digital trickery no cgi just it's really difficult to to uh, to draw a thing moving towards or away from you uh and like yes. yeah and i believe there's even one shot it might be the same one you're thinking yeah. of where um it's the headlights of the car are on the bushes yeah. so they had to like repaint the um backgrounds multiple times to get this effect of like light being on yeah, the bushes light being, yeah and completely yeah. changing the lighting of the scene yeah, i think that that car yes. is just generally really great yeah. like it has a lot of character like when she steps into oh, it yeah. and you see how like the weight uh of, of them just uh moves it around like if, if you've ever like had or like uh, been with someone who had like a really that kind of small uh, <laughs> car with, with like a manual yeah, gear yeah. that you know exactly the feeling of like the the, the whole thing like sort of rumbling but it's it, it's it's a really like great little car i like the car yeah, yeah. Miyazaki and takahara clearly have both have like loves for these little japanese these little like european cars yeah that are have so much character to them but like not, and not, it's also again yeah. just while we're in the cast it's very cool like like it, the movie explicitly says when toshio and taiko get into it like uh, when when, when toshio is getting her from the station um he's like oh i should have taken the, the car of my father but i'd like this one more like this idea of like first of all it's kind of authentic but also it's like his car it's that kind of i i, I think he just likes it he just likes to 
I, I want to tie this into the idea of like pretending, but it's also like the idea of authenticity, which are kind of going hand in hand here. The lines between those two blur. Like he knows he should yes. have taken his father's car. It would have been more comfortable, but he does not care. Like he acts in this way because this is what he likes more. Hmm. And he's he's like boldly listening to his Hungarian farming yeah. music. <laughs> his Hungarian farming farmer. music on the radio. Yeah. And then it's just like that that gets like shown again where he takes tries to take the car up the mountains to get the scene view, but he blocks up traffic. Yeah, and that's just a how, great like, scene. It's it, they don't even mention it. It's just like a little <laughs> it's a little two second cut where he pulls right. over to the side and cars are beeping as they're going by because he was going too slow. No, no, I think they're beeping like like as, as a as a uh, thanks kind of they weren't beeping oh, at maybe, before maybe he they pulled were over. It's, it's, it, because like it's maybe the that's my like maybe that's my experience from where I live, <laughs> where the only reason probably people is. are beeping. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, but like, I, I think some... that's I think that shot is like a really great example, not only of why Toshio is uh, best boy. Uh, he's uh, like, like he's really considerate. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that's that's a pretty yeah. that's that's a good trait to have to be considerate in traffic. Yes. Um, well, while we're about like talking about like how amazing the animation of the film is, like for me, the most really am- amazing feat is what we already talked about, like this extreme yeah. amount of facial and like body language animation yeah. my favorite scene in this regard is probably when both of them sit in the car in the rain at the very end of the movie and toshio is like okay i'm gonna listen to her now and she's like he's frustrated oh. like rummaging around in his like ashtray in the car to find a cigarette and he says he, he has his eyebrows raised and he's clicking his tongue and you can see every little minute detail of his movement and it's just incredible like how subtle and how realistic and how like it, it, emotionally detailed this animation is it's like really it's, rich and, and it's also a moment that like would that wouldn't feel out of place in the live action film that like, like it's yeah. it's a way to get the characters to do something while the the dialogue is going on which is a really important way to keep like uh, to keep momentum to keep it interesting visually uh and 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 i think that's a really impressive part of this uh film is how yes uh true to life it is in that way that 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 you can kind of like sit there and sometimes you're like hang on why is this an animated film specifically because it, it, no seriously because it has these uh <laughs> like part of it is the way it records dialogue and animates over it to like really make the actors front and center in the way you would uh, a live action uh movie it's it, it's and it's really like adult mm-hmm. and contemporary yeah. and even like has connection to uh like I, I, it's easier to compare it to live action films like yeah uh, like ozu uh, yeah like ozu or what one one film it reminded me a lot of is uh, boyhood which is one of my favorite Ayo. films mm-hmm. ever just like the way it portrays the everyday life uh yeah. in in childhood hmm. but there's also where we find like why it is an animated film like yeah. the ideas that are being conveyed mm-hmm. is like through this shift back and forth to these like reality melding framing devices where you have like uh, the past scenes, like the kids appear on the train and melt into like the past and then you fade back into reality and so on, like very smooth transitions. And uh, this idea that like the past wouldn't have been this yes. way, well, it could have probably been done in live action. Of course it could have done, but uh, this way, how they did it was really, really cool. Like this fading out, like the painterly backgrounds, which have very pastel kind of colored focus on emotional language and so on. And then fading back, like no transition to live action or anything. I think that would have been kind of like goofy or jarring. Yes. Maybe you could pull it off. Like, But it is almost like as if there was a transition between the memory reality, which is exclusively conveyed through the strengths and virtues of animation as a medium and then reality which uh, or present day which is conveyed like a much more realistic kind of fashion and the the animation style suits both extremely well and the way in which i said it is like kind of takahara is like okay i want to do an animated ozu film and i also yes. want to use the strengths of uh, uh, uh animation to do some of these memories and boom there we go yeah, <laughs> but, but like even aside from the memories i think the backgrounds which we've mentioned before is oh, yeah. that's such an important like part of the film because yes. like, you you really get to buy into that idea that the rural life is really what she was looking for that it's meaningful that it's beautiful that it's worth like working her ass off to like uh maintain a life there and like yeah then the, the backgrounds in the present days are just beautiful i think i don't think you could do this kind of uh, i hesitate to say idealization but like this romantic Version I would say it's definitely like, like an idealization and a romanticization because that's that's what Takahata is really like getting at with yeah. this movie. Because I would yeah. say the the structure and the way the anime de- animation deals with it, it's actually quite reminiscent of uh, to me a uh, Millennium yes. Actress. The way the um, there's this constant shifting between 
styles and perspectives oh, yeah. and it's like a, a total blending like you know Con, ah, Con loves to do stream. that yeah that's that's Con's whole forte yeah but with the uh, Takahata he's doing it like so much more like subtly and then it all builds into like the climax that is the ending credits where all the children like come into the real world and then like like kind of fade away at the end like the memory fully like addressed yeah. and the trauma yes. like resolved yeah but but it's also like um yes. um I think the quote was from Takahara. Like I don't have the quote on hand, but it was talking about the idea of why he likes animation. And he said that even if you like try to animate in a realistic way, you have you, you need to emphasize things. You will abstract from the real object. And like if people see a real object, like a real photo of a face, like they're applying the filters and the like the 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 ways in which they look at it that they also apply to like every other photo. But with animation, oh. you kind of like bring a viewer to consider something in a different light again. Like I'm pretty sure like Takahara is trying to say to us like the amount of detail in the background would also be present on a photo but because of this animation we realize it more we consciously make us aware of it of it much more because of how animation like kind of changes our perspective on things yeah i think having like nice shots of nature is like a very common thing in in, in live action film that's like what everyone goes to but to like have these amazingly painted uh, backgrounds they make you like truly take in the nature in a way that you'd never really consider yeah and that's kind of like where his romantic romanticization of it comes through where he wants everyone to constantly like consider like the sheer amount of just natural beauty that these people live in every day yeah, like the, it, it isn't merely documented it's depicted it's uh artistically uh adapted and yeah that, that that adds like a layer of appreciation because you have to appreciate the appreciation of it like it's uh like uh, i think that's something like that studio ghibli just in general are like amazing at yeah and when uh, who are the background artists on this uh in, in this film uh, does anyone know i haven't looked it up all right well <laughs> well uh while, uh, while our, you... our usual background uh, our usual staff a person yeah. which is dark he, he isn't here so we miss you kind of stranded, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, we miss you yeah that's true um yeah i was all i was gonna say was um yeah well when i first watched the movie right um yard dropped me the, the the sick realization that i like that the present day scenes weren't actually in the in the original manga and that was all like made whole cloth from takahata and that like you talking about like can you appreciate the appreciation can you appreciate the level of care that goes into something to the love of a story to the point where you can make <clears throat> where you can create something that has that like has like basically no basis from the original work and make it seems uh, make it so much more interesting in that regard like that's probably why i personally enjoy only yes because I can appreciate like that level of care that a, a person can have towards a story. So I did some sneaky looking up and I found out the background person is Akira Yamakawa, who also did backgrounds on Barefoot Gen, uh, Pompoko, a previous Takahara movie from the 80s, which is Jarinko Chie, oh. uh, Ghost in the Shell 2, Innocence, and Totoro. And Totoro, I knew it! Yeah, yeah. see, Totoro has, like, very high-tier backgrounds, yeah. and Pompoko actually does as well. And Pompoko, Pompoko probably does, like, the most with the backgrounds, actually, yeah. by, like, actually animating a lot of the stuff yeah. that goes on there. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so, uh, going back to what you just said, uh, uh, Jubas, which is uh, the whole thing of, like, appreciating, like, how much care you put into yeah. it. I think that's, I think that's kind of, like, what uh makes uh taiko and toshio's uh, like blossoming romance work i think that's something that she really appreciates about him that, that this that he's really like passionate about this yes. thing and uh like we see from the flashback she never really got to have that at least like not within the time we, we saw i think that's she one tried yeah. she tried with the acting right yes. she, yeah she exactly. tried to put really put passion in but first she's kind of shot down by a teacher who says please don't alter the lines uh, mm -hmm. But then she realizes something. I'm going to talk about this a bit more later, but just remember this example that she can act while like following the lines. She can still flush out the acting so much. And it's this is where she put in her passion. She like really invested like into this, but it was kind of like taken away from her. She couldn't like pursue this yeah. path of this uh, of doing this. I think that's honestly, I think that's honestly like the like saddest memory in the in, in the. Yes, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's the one memory I feel like is like 
really like significant to her life in a bigger way than just like the uh, most of the memories are just like little scenes that sort of build up to this person like this insecurity she has stemming from like the way uh, her big her, her bigger sisters were always like like getting her down and the the way her parents had expectations she didn't meet like with her math homework uh there's also like yeah. one of the one of the one of the first lines in the flashbacks is I'd rather you were a good eater than a good essay writer, yeah. which is just like um, okay, fuck you too. Ah, uh, yeah, takes like it this. very seriously. Uh, this is what Jupe said earlier that for a child, these things are all extremely relevant. I think like almost none of the memories we flash back to are actually like as small and insignificant. Like sure, this thing about the star, we feel like it is kind of like one of the bigger ones because it like kind of like sounds like a bigger one. But also for yeah. her, I'd rather you be a good eater than a good essay writer. It had impact on her. Like we had so many scenes following that, that she was eating well. She tried to eat the pineapple. She, she, she did the school thing where she like drank the milk of her, of the other, of the, of the other guy. And she felt bad about yeah. throwing away onions, all these kinds of little things. And she takes them very, very seriously. Um, Yes. For her, these experiences actually do like deeply matter, uh, in all of them. I, I would argue. I, yeah. had, I had a different example in my head, but I, but it, it slips out of my mind right now. So well, well, yeah, legitimately. Like I think when I was watching it again, I did comment on this. I was like, she gets maybe like five, like not even five, like a minute or two to talk about something that she's really passionate about, and then the moment that like. Like, it's just instantly shot down by something oh, negative. The, and for a kid, yeah. that is so impactful. That and hurts so my much. My example that I was going to talk about was the memory she has of her father slapping her in the face. Yes. Because what she yes. says when she talks to the, to the kid at the farm, she's saying, well, maybe it's better that you get, like, have it kind of regular. Because if it's just once, you never stop asking yourself why. This is like kind of the idea we have here, that this is the moment where she learned something that completely changed her life and that never left her, that she's still now like ruminating on it. Like yeah. what caused this? Why? Like, sure, she realized I was like a selfish brat. My father like really was kind of slipping this one time and like he's not a bad guy. But because he's not a bad guy, because I cannot like blame him or anything, I need to understand what was this? Why did it happen? And it's, it's such a deeply life altering memory, even though it's just actually yeah. such a tiny incident. Yeah, uh, I didn't mean to say that like the memories are like uh, insignificant to her. I just meant that the the whole thing yeah. with the acting just it really like 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 personally like my parents have always been very supportive supportive of me and like whenever I've had an interest in something they've always like we've always like found a club for it and uh, and had me like see if it's something for me and so that idea that like a parent would just be like no you can't I'm not gonna allow you to do that. That, yeah, that, no that, art people are just hippies. <laughs> yeah, that 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 just that, that really hit kind of hard yes. for me because, um, and and it's it's the one moment that feels like a, like a timeline split. Oh yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. That, a, a thing that really deeply comments on like where she is, uh, in the present day because that decision to not let her, uh, try acting, could have been such a like, it could have changed her life. But we, we this, won't but this is such an interesting angle. I agree. And the idea is like here, isn't Takahata for us outlining the idea that, well, you could become like an artist. You could like be in, entrenched in the art community and would probably also be a nice lifestyle, something to aspire to. But not everyone can be there. Takahata is very consciously saying like, let's avoid this kind of like star and, and fame focus that kind of like comes from these westernized, like uh, special individualist yes. ideas. And let's focus on like, it is a very commonly shared experience that you tried to do art but couldn't. What is yeah. there else in the world? Yeah. Where can we find a place? Well, well, I think uh, I think it's a nice contrast uh, in comparison to uh, the film we re reviewed previously, which was Kiki, which was very like specifically kind of about art and about a person who can like only do one very special talented mm. thing. This is almost like the other side of the coin of like she can't do that. Like so farming is almost like a is a special thing that's like very common and easy to do but like it, it still requires this like dedication and community yes. i mean the legitimately um something that i talked about with nyard before is that an art community right like a drama club they have the same lifestyle really you have like a community of like-minded individuals who are all trying to pursue a craft who are usually are very friendly with each other who spend a long time together it's the same community feeling but within a modern setting and it's too specialized like you said like 
like so many people pursue art when, when in modern situations because they feel like that's the only avenue where they get the ability to express themselves to be a part of a community in that way in the modern world and um and well, whereas like when you go into the country the country it, the country just at least in this movie obviously within like a more propagandized romanticist lens the the country life is that lifestyle permeated within almost everything you could be anything in the countryside you don't need to be an artist to be a part of a community in the countryside yeah well i think, I, I think like the uh, I, th I think we're getting a bit hung up on the whole thing. Like, is, is a, an artistic life worth having? I don't think that's a central question there. I think I, I think that it's more sad that she couldn't pursue one of her passions that she was obviously. But she did at. pursue it. Uh, no, yeah, no, she did some drama classes in high school. She says, but yeah, she, yeah right. It's, it's right. legit. Like the thing is, like that's that's why I like I'm basing. I obviously didn't put that in. She said she did join the drama club. She said she did try to pursue it when she was older and had more um autonomy and and agency. But she said it wasn't for her. Like right, right, um, right. and and that like like again, it's it's it wasn't really like it's not the. It's not like the feeling of being an artist that she wanted. It was that feeling of community that she wanted, a lifestyle that seemed to be really specialized. You had to be like an artist or like really a weird specialist in a modern society to have that. Whereas like the country, like I said, the countryside is universal. You can be anything. You don't need to be an artist in the countryside to be a part of a community, which is I, what she I, wanted. I think the significance isn't as much the community part as it oh, is yeah. like wanting to be good at something i think that's more important to her like it, it is in the flashbacks like again we have that whole uh yeah she, she writes great essays yeah but she's a picky eater and that's what she gets criticized for and she doesn't yes. get praised for what she's good at uh, she always gets yeah she, she, she gets criticized for her shortcomings and, and like the, the whole having someone notice her being good at something she wants to be good at that like that that seems like such a yeah that's so much more significant yeah because i yeah again like with with that um flashback scene she thinks of like the adults that she could act with as like people who would recognize her talent not these stinky kids and teachers who don't understand her very pretentious very young you know like a very like like you know kind of like pretentious little kid thing to do but it means a lot to her because her environment is centered around these kind of stoic not very passionate people especially her father like her father is not the the way in the artist, his father is very very much a patriarch he's, he doesn't seem very passionate about anything and he if he shoots something down it never gets it never gets contested again right yeah um we, we have we have these uh like like dinner table scenes where he's like reading the newspaper and and, and like yes. his presence is really really strong like like he, he I, I think yeah. maybe the newspaper is part of it like not not just He's really, really static, uh, but also like the newspaper f fills more space. Yes. I think it's really yeah. interesting in that way. So he's certainly stern and he's used to the family operating like after what he declares. So it's very interesting. Like, yes. for example, when he doesn't like a topic being brought up, he says dinner now. And then, it's, then the dinner starts immediately. Like this, this yeah. kind of, these kinds of transitions happen like immediately out of a conversation into now I have the upper hand. I will tell dinner. This, yep. I declare. <laughs> Yeah, I found the father figure like particularly interesting out of all like the childhood stuff because, like you were saying that like America is kind of like influencing Japanese culture at the time. Like I think that's definitely a theme because logically her father would have like remembered World War Two yeah, and like yeah. the uh, like American invasion and occupation, and he's almost like struggling to reclaim like the uh, traditional uh, like masculine role of like a Japanese father, and so that's why he takes it like very seriously like. He dresses in like the the robes. Yes, and you know, he drinks whenever he sake. Comes home, he, he's always um, reading the newspaper, being proper. Doesn't want her his daughter to be near showbiz people because those are not only like American kinds of people, but like you know, like these new people, like these are uh, these like fancy new bloods, and they're like hippie yes. ways. Yep. And even um, I think I think the the moment where he slaps her is is pretty good example of this because it's not just he's like reached his limit. But it's, she's not wearing shoes like a proper woman should be. 
you know, like you take your shoes yes. off inside their house, you always wear shoes outside. And I would and like say this reaching that also an element of respecting like the um, uh, part, uh, articles of clothing, right? I bet, I bet in the wartime, yeah, he probably yeah. like got taught like respect the socks you have, like don't sully them, don't like make them dirty, don't whatever, like keep, yes, keep, take care of your things. Hey, j j just a quick observation. Um, um, so hmm. not necessarily Taiko herself, but her sisters, are they baby boomers like they would be born like right around uh, like the end of the be, war yes. i mean childhood in the 60s they're kind of boomers yeah. <laughs> but also yeah, like her sisters her uh, sisters are like yeah no, they're, they're really growing up it's just it. really nasty <laughs> but both of them are very modern like we see the oh, scenes explicitly where the yes. one sister has like the mini skirt oh like, that's such a lovely little all the detail time, yeah. uh, I think I bet like the father is very like upset that this one sister is like picking up too much of this modern shit. <laughs> yeah, just exactly. Like, I don't know. That's probably yeah. like a, a, a scene we don't see where where like he really disapproves of the other sisters. Well, actually, the fun fact the the you know again where they they bring up like the show business thing of of like her being oh, a yeah. part of like the acting troupe the person who who is the most supportive is the older sister the sister that's more i think she was a like, fan uh, of it has a more modern the, yeah, was, uh, yeah. some actress yeah no it, it was a cross-dressing well, no, the, right? the, the younger yeah the the younger one is the fan of the actress but the 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 more vocal proponent of um of taiko's like acting career is the and older it, and one she brings up and when she the moment she starts speaking yeah she brings yeah. up a career, and the moment she brings up a career, the dad shoots yeah, it down. Yeah, because, like, the idea like, of career, this is like an argument, like, hedging, like, dad, listen, yes. she can have a career, she can make her own life from this, and, and so on. Like, this is an argument where they try to convince the other the parents. Taiko that was takes the wrong. this yes, to be... Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Taiko takes this to be like, oh, uh, 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 why did you bring up career? Like, this ruined it. I'm not sure if it ruined it, but, like, she was trying so hard. This was actually trying to be in support of Taiko, and it really interesting like a little little tip yes. there. yeah yeah and, and it is it is interesting and also kind of it is sad obviously to see people be so enthusiastic and then the moment the dad speaks up and shoots it down it's silence and there's nothing and that sucks and you can see how like the like taiko is visibly distressed but no one can comment on it i think it, gender roles and, are actually like a, a pretty big part of the, the movie like like it's not a central theme but it definitely comes up like especially uh the, the the whole sequence with the with the periods um where like all the girls are ex experiencing periods for the first time yeah, and learning yeah. about it for the first time and the boys hear about it and then oh <laughs> no the boys then everything goes wrong why because, did you tell the boys exactly because boys are fu the fucking worst the least emotionally intelligent beasts on the planet yeah. Um, oh my god, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's so interesting because we have Taiko is weird. Even her gender role is weird. She, uh, like, she hates being identified with the idea of a period. Like, her other classmate yep. just accepts it. She's, like, calm and very, like, oh, these boys. But, but Taiko yeah, is, like, extremely boys. upset. Like, oh god, I hope nobody thinks I'm having a period. Oh, jeez, Christ. Uh, and at other times, like, yeah. in adult life, she... Like, her mother is constantly pestering her to... Uh, like, other people are constantly pestering her to marry. She does not really want to marry. She, does, she doesn't really care about that in th this moment. And I think it's not simply for the lack of a good partner, but, like, it's kind of like... She's fine, like, just being the weirdo, alone person she was, like, in a sense. Like, she finds a better home, a better place to be at. But she yeah. very much, like, generally deviates from the traditional image of womanhood. And... This is maybe a point where we would disagree. Like, I know that some people have made these claims, but I think uh, even by the end of the movie, this is not her conforming to a traditional place as a, as, a, as a woman, but going to be a weirdo at a different place. Because she and Toshi are both like, she, they are weirdos and they will stay weirdos. And that's very yes, important. Yes, they to absolutely me. are. Yeah. The, 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 uh... I don't know if I can uh, agree with you there, though, because I do feel like that the narrative supports like this traditionalist idea, like far more. Yeah. Like, even if you're saying, like, the characters are weird, I feel like just the texture of what the film displays for us 100% reinforces so, this. Because, like, um, her mother is trying to, like, set her up, as we understand, in the uh, the beginning of the movie. She's probably tried to do it a bunch of times, which is, like, I assume, like, a very common thing, you know? Like, yeah. you pick the, the men you feel suitable for your daughter. But then we find out that, like, when she goes out to the country, the exact same thing is already happening. Like, Tojino is sent to pick her up, basically, as a date. 
and then he's probably like told off screen to take her on a date another day that we see like it's it's of no like illusion that they want Hoshino to like marry her and they he probably knows this beforehand as well so it's like this whole thing where they even but they even say in a later so, scene that they were the family do know and they were kind of like planning it I, I the would, whole time that I they would were not want to ask in on this. I would not want to ask if we want to go into this now or if we're going to take the uh, traditionalism versus like the non not so traditionalist leading if we want to do this a bit later because I think, there's I think, a lot I think we, to talk about there. I, th I think we uh, I, I think we can talk about yeah, it now. I, th I think we yeah we we might as well like uh, okay, talk sure. about that now because like the whole. It is one of the big questions, like especially like um, I've I've read a few like Western reviews uh, that that quite a few came out when when it was dubbed back in uh, twenty sixteen. Yeah, and and like a lot of them talked about how, at least some of them talked about how it like it feels kind of, kind of like a really conservative ending, like like. See, her... funny enough, I read the opposite. I read many articles. I read many articles which were like. This is a feminist movie because it is about a single woman and it's not a love story. But it kind of is at the end, though. Like the whole climax of the film so is... This is. This is complete. This, this yeah, is but like a, if, this if a the ending question. is the conceit, right? The ending is the conceit of a of a film. Like that. That's a, a pretty ba basic thing. So like the the ending is, is sort of like, well, hang on. Like I um I think I'm gonna marry this dude that this uh <laughs> this well, old woman is hitching I... me to. No, wait, quite, a minute, it's, it's wait a minute. Quite I'm playing so devil's explicit, advocate because I, I, yeah, I agree that it's more course, complicated than that. It is The marriage is open. I, it's absolutely an option. But I think yes. we, we need to be careful in reading the texture and the ideas that the film puts forward. Because I have like come up with like an interesting idea because that, that I would want to introduce right now in order so we can talk about this idea of whether or not I have any validity in my claims that it's much less traditionalist than it might seem. Because this idea, and this is very related to an interesting and very iconic scene, is uh, the idea of naturalization. So the scene that I want to bring up this context is where Toshio and Taiko sit uh, and look at landscape. And Taiko's like, wow, this is really out, out, out nowhere. We are out in bumfuck nowhere, and this is all nature. And Toshio uh, says, hold on a minute. Look, this is all man-made. What you've now perceived as natural is actually kind of like a historical contract, uh, construct nature and man have evolved together in this place and we've constructed like we put this this little river creek there we put this uh, field there the rice plantations those trees this forest everything is man-made this is all a synergy so the idea here is that naturalization is a process where something that is like historically conditioned it's historically contingent and like constructed through history becomes natural in perceptions uh, commonly perceived like just accept these things as natural because we perceive them as such and we don't question like how they are actually constructed in a similar way and i tie this i love to tie this into the idea of dividing fractions which is of course like a, also a very iconic scene where she's like well could you divide fractions because i always thought that people who could divide fractions would be the most successful at life for me this always was like for her because she was sitting there, like, cutting the apple in pieces, seeing, like, how do you divide one half by one fourth? What, what does this mean? For her, she didn't accept the kind of naturalization as her sister and everyone else did, which is just do the formula. Like, all of them could not explain what dividing a fraction actually is, but said, just do the formula. That's just how it is, that's how it works. They ignore, like, that there is something that goes into this dividing of fractions, which she's trying to get at, which she needs to understand. Like, because they are naturalizing it, because they're already accepting these rules as kind of like fundamental rules of the universe. The same way that commonly people in Japan would think, well, a 27-year-old woman should be married. Like, why? Because it's what women do. It's kind of natural, right? Taiko always had these kind of looking behind the veil on these kinds of things. And Toshio does kind of the same thing. Like, he highlights at many, many points that everything you do and think of yourself and construct for yourself and your identity is in some way an act of pretending, but also that is fine. That is good. That is how it is. Taiko, for example, realizes, thinking back to Abe, and I'm going to bring Abe up now, which we're going to talk about more later probably, um, and the idea is there that Abe pretends to be an asshole to her to hide on one hand his affection and also like to... Uh, try to be tough for someone, to pretend to be tough for someone, like to have this appearance, and appearances are very important for naturalization. Taiko 
uh, pretends to be nice to hide her own disgust. The funny thing is, if you pretend to be nice to someone, even if you just pretended, Abe still had affection for her, at least that's Toshio's theory. The way we pretend underlies and hides kind of a, 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 a much more complicated process that is going on beneath the surface. And what it comes down to is that the idea of what is pretend and what is real doesn't really matter if you just embrace it deep enough. And when we take all these ideas together and notice that when Taiko really breaks down and realizes, oh shit, I'm just an imposter, is when she's pestered again about marriage. Because I think it's not presented in a much, like, an extremely positive light, but this family, it, I, like, I don't think we're supposed to look at the family at the farm, go looking at her and, like, saying, oh, marry Toshio, and think they're just kooky, funny farm people. But I think we're supposed to see where she's, again, facing a point where she feels an unsurmountable difference leveraged through the expectations at her and her own feeling of authenticity and belonging where she runs away from this and only needs this talking to, to Toshio and realize that um, this process which underlies all this, like kind of these, these feelings of performing creates authenticity in the first place, right? This idea of um, connecting to people through performances and so on. So what I see there is that she returns with a desire to embrace uh, an interesting new life without any of the pretenses that this is kind of the natural order, but with the awareness of these performances that go into it, with the awareness that this lifestyle has been naturalized. But she's going in there to try and see what kind of future she can get there to, to act out like it. And this is why I think like marriage is implied. Marriage was very much the thing that kind of broke the facade for her of like the order that she was kind of being put into. And she realized that something doesn't quite fit. And yeah, she may marry Toshio down the, right, down the line, but this is not like the central point here. The central point is that she realizes I can be part of this community without having to pretend to be something else, or rather by pretending to be part of this community, I become part of this community. That acting is a process by which we naturalize our positions and our roles in life. And by viewing through this naturalization, you realize there's not an unsurmountable gap between me and you. There's not an unsurmountable gap between Taiko and Abe. There's not an unsurmountable gap between the city and the rural life. There is something which we can bridge and like imitation and trying to live and experience this life authentically is a way to bridge this gap. Yeah. And this is what I got out of this movie instead of uh, a woman finding a traditional place in harmony in a traditional family. That's a really uh, interesting I, reading. I, I, I agree to what you're saying there about the way she like latches onto the performance. And I definitely think that's the whole thing with Arbe. I agree. But I do kind of think that like the, again, like what I'm saying, like the, 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 the narrative that is presented to us as an audience, 100% reaffirms this. Cause like we said, she is set up by the, um, the farmers to like, to marry Toshino. They're like, come on, he's, he's for you. Like, this is perfect and she like she she rejects it because yeah she feels like she's a phony but then she totally just does embrace it and the ending of the film is this like unbelievable emotional climax where like all the children are running with her she does the dramatic changing of trains and comes back and like runs runs into him on the way and i feel like like the what the audience is being shown is this like deep thing that like they were right all along he was perfect for her they can't just live this perfect like lovely farm life and like you can even like picture like the nuclear family they have afterwards so i don't think it's like that progressive in that sense but i do i do agree a lot about what you said about performance that definitely is a, a very strong I, I, th element I think of it's film. I, I think it's a i think it's a synth i think it's a synthesis i think i think it's both things i think it's like like how it is with organic farming it's natural but also cultivated like it's uh, and, and yeah. there's nothing Natural, exactly but wrong. denaturalized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I I do agree to that. The movie's subtle in a lot of ways. Organic it's... farming is like the way Toshi describes it as we help out nature and giving it life force, kind of like this means be un unobtrusive, be undestructive, don't like force the plant in what whatever way. And I think like this relationship is also like kind of like organic farming. Like there is happiness that is gonna be nurtured, but it's not like enforced it is not like a, a, a putting on of the traditional role that is then completing like the happiness circle but and this is like probably like the, the, the another point that i want to make is the deepest moment of bonding between toshio and uh, and taiko in my opinion except for the car scene is the one where they sit on the cliff and together thing sing this song from the kid tv series they they both watched the the, the song about putting things off 
which she thought like procrastination and so on is like not the good thing, <laughs> but she loved that Toshio interpreted in a positive, yeah. affirmative way to put things off to the next day and then worry about them. What I think is happening here is Taiko ran away from the idea of having to commit to a marriage to put a seal of authenticity on her rural kind of lifestyle because she wasn't ready to commit yet, but she was not ready to abandon the rural lifestyle either. She wanted to return and like put it off, put the decision off and return and see how life treats you. This is, this is at least my view here because it fits so perfectly with the kind of bonding moment they had there with the song. Yeah, I agree, but I, I do feel like textually, like that it is implied they definitely get like married right away. Yeah, most likely. Like, it's definitely the, the in big the cards. sign about like, their like heads. It's, it's, it's the part of the decision. Are. Also, I would say something in the film that definitely like reinforces this narrative quite a lot is the uh, the the ages in the way that we're we're getting flashbacks to when she was ten and when she is getting her first periods and becoming like a, a woman. She's like developing like into being like an adult and then as she's like in her late 20s an age in which she should be getting married and having children as like she's she's finally coming into her own as like a mother and like maybe not a mother but like a proper like older woman and this is the new step in her life and her marriage to Toshino is like the ceiling of that that's like the moment where she's probably like achieved her role in that sense I mean it, it might be very open but at least here yeah, I have to say like the fact I think like, like, let's go with they marry. Like, it's definite they do. Um, if we go with this, I still think it's like a much more authentic way to do it because, of course, like the old people have kind of arranged this, but we cannot, we absolutely cannot deny that on both sides of them, there's absolutely chemistry. They're like almost made for each other. They're like really good. The way in which Toshio is weird and kind of like helps us sort out her thoughts with his own like weirdo thoughts functions perfectly. Like, they resonate really well. So, whether or not it's set up or not, like, again, the idea of performance ultimately it doesn't matter if like yep. they ultimately make the real decision by the end to 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 come together on their own terms it's not the same as her mother trying to hook up as guys that she doesn't absolutely doesn't know and like she's like i don't know these people i don't care about these people like of course i reject them like along those lines that um which is like the very first scene of the movie where she's like phoning her mom and it's like yeah no i i i, I or her yeah, sister exactly I it's 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 no yeah I, I agree it's, that the synthesis the character is character definitely is there like, the she does something at the end that she would never have done at the start of the story. And that's because there's something that's changed uh, about her or like about her environment. It's and the important thing is, we, it is not a man coming and showing the woman her rightful place. It is a woman coming to discover a different life and finding for herself what, what, she, what she cares yeah. about and what she doesn't care about. Working through her own memories with the help of someone else, of course, naturally. But it's not that she was shown her place, but that she found her place. And, and and legitimately another thing that I that I thought was really interesting is that um I don't I think people need to understand that Toshio is not like all of the other people in the farm like there he's not like the grandma or like <clears throat> or the father any of these people because Toshio left this place he left this place he went to the city and he came back he has like a very similar experience to Tycho in in ways that the 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 grandma cannot, and that's why like like it's not like some you know some farmer kid coming in and like you know showing her a new perspective. It's a it's a kid coming in with a very similar experience to her, but with a with a different yeah. perspective. He's been he's not been a farmer for long. He may seem so super into yeah. it, but he's been one for a year or so. Like. Yes. Not long. He's also extremely fresh, fresh there. He's just sharing his passion for this. He's not in any way like the traditional, like the rural, like man, patriarch, whatever. They, they are, they, both of them are so much on a wavelength that it's actually like there's no like power difference yes. between them. Actually, he's younger than her, which is also another thing. Like this yeah. is kind of like untraditional. Really like, the movie even comments on it. Yeah. Um, I, I think. Um... I, I I think again it comes back to this whole synthesis thing because like it it there's there's yeah. an that there's a genuine authenticity to it and and I think we should also recognize that like we uh in the West we have a really strong aversion to this kind of yes, like uh, yes. planned marriage type deal uh which is like it's much more like n normal in other cultures including Japan and especially like uh, the further back we go uh the the more common it is and the uh, and and of course these are like traditional people, but I think part of it is that like this life, like 
uh, suits her and then they recognize that and that they're, they're genuinely trying to help her but it's still like her own decision to uh to, to yeah i think that's the line that kind of exactly. like breaks her where the um, the family says um look you you're really happy here like you should just marry him and live here this is where you belong and then she kind of like can't accept that and causes the whole yeah. thing where she runs oh, and boy. sees the vision of uh Arbe. which do we want to get into that I, now I, the, I, uh, I think that's a couple of things those... i want to talk about first because okay um, yeah, you go. because I, I i think it's like the whole like tradition versus like progress is not really that much of a competition in this uh, film and i think uh, it, it, it's obviously a theme that isao takahara like uh, is really interested in like um we, we'll see it in pompoko and in uh, uh, princess kaguya later um and, and i think this is a really interesting nuance and human take on it like n- no, nothing supernatural going on because like any any given life isn't like isn't necessarily all rebellious and isn't necessarily all conforming uh i think it's uh like she finds this sort of a synthesis and i think part of it is uh this sense of like yeah like belonging we've we've mentioned before um but but the 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 type of belonging that runs deeper than just people around you there's something about that traditional life that really like speaks to her like like she belongs to a place and a time rather than just uh, a, a group of people a big theme here is of course like a favorite of takahara being the old communist that he is uh <laughs> the capitalist alienation where we see like the, the distinction to the economy being opened like explicitly uh, about well he has an organic yes. farmer you live for your job which doesn't mean like you live to be a laborer but you live because you live your job because you love it it's something that fills you with purpose it is so-called then unalienated labor while in the in the city you like big corporate overlords like the the gigantic cold structures that that mm-hmm. everywhere that hipster described earlier and like the job that Tycho obviously says well i don't hate it but i don't live for it like not even close she she takes a vacation to have authentic work in order to get away from work that she doesn't like or not likes doesn't like as much and this is kind of a very important idea here and this is also very clear in like the visual stories that kind of like the difference between city and community tells us a way in which I like to think about it is that in the city, there's not much interaction with other people she has. Like she talks uh, at work once, she encounters a kid on the street, on yep. the market, and the kid runs away immediately. And other than that, like everyone is just walking past her. Everyone is going away. Nobody's looking at her. And even the train, when she enters it, like she enters with a ton, ton of people, but in the train, ultimately, she's alone. So all these ideas flow together of like people are living past each other in this densely cramped, uh, cramped dense space and are not like living with each other while in community in the community as soon as she arrives everyone is looking at her smiling at her talking to her she's constantly spending time with others working together with others she's not in a single apartment anymore just thinking about memories and whatever but she's with other people talking to them like cooking together uh working together and this is kind of like the difference that uh, takahara is opening up here between like the rural life and the city life where in a city life you're kind of atomized and isolated while in a rural life you have like actual community actual relations to people and people are not just like even the street this is very remarkable because in, in one scene she passes uh, another woman on the street and she bows like politely to the other woman the other woman bows politely back this is not what is happening in the city nobody's greeting each other it's it's not happening it's too many people yeah i think it, the word alienation is a really good one to describe uh her like uh, issue her arc like, oh yeah we, we mentioned earlier how like th- that feeling of not quite belonging, not qu- not quite being right, uh, is-, is a central thing going through uh, the flashback sequence. Oh yeah, the insistence, the insistence by her, like her her sister and her mother, like why is she? Why does she not understand math? It has to be because she was dropped on her head as a kid. She's not normal. This doesn't make sense. It, like the, this is something that, like communicated, and they try to talk in secret, but she's always listening, and like it's again like it's sometimes communicated very clearly sometimes with the mom just base yelling she's not normal right that like yeah i think that was the best example of like the the hegemonies that like taiko like spends this in time of you trying to like break mm-hmm. free from because i even found that like the weirdest thing maybe that's just like the, the japanese thing but it's just like she's like 10 years old and not doing like well in one maths yep. test and like they're like freaking out 
that she can't understand this one yep. thing and taking it like so serious exactly. because, and this is this is such a good scene because of this because the idea here is hey it is just one simple rule just remember the rule and then everyone will accept you but she will not accept the rule because she doesn't get the rule. I identify with this so much because I've always been like some like a, a, a nasty ass kid who was like, why shouldn't I eat in class? I finished my work. Yeah, the, the, but, leave the, me alone. Let me eat. The but why <laughs> though? Uh, but, yeah. but why? The but why yeah. though? Taiko goes, but why though? What What's the point? Like, it is. Yeah. It, you, it, life could be so easy if you just accept what people tell you that you need to do to be normal. But Taiko is not willing to. Yes. And th this is compounded even more when she has that conversation with Toshio on the top of the mountain. Yeah. She asks about it dividing fractions. that people who can divide fractions always are more successful in life. Yes. Okay, uh, just a quick show of hands or life. the equivalent. Ed, c could you divide fractions when you were in school? Yeah, but Dude, I, I I'm didn't still I still sense. struggle with it. And I like look up the formula. Like the easy yeah. ones where I look like one force like fits twice in one half. Okay, I can like picture it, but for the other shit, I actually like I, I'm a fucking computer science student among like English and computer science. I don't have two subjects. And I have like, <laughs> high level university level maths, which don't trouble me at all. I just I, yeah. I work through it, I get how the formulas relate. I never fucking got around to like memorizing the formula for div uh, for, for dividing fractions. I always have like a little cheat sheet where, where I've written on ah! it. Like my friend at university who like we learned together for an exam and we were allowed to like bring one piece of paper with like handwriting on it as a like as a sheet sheet oh my God. For, for the yeah. exam. And we like wrote it like completely full, like every little space, nook and cranny filled. Like there's no way you could like, you needed like almost like a magnifying glasses to read anything, both sides. <laughs> and I made sure to put on this fucking formula for d uh, dividing fractions. I'm not even kidding. Yep. Yep. So legitimately, it's it's funny because like I would be able to memorize the formula, sure. But like as a kid, like I definitely have these moments like I don't understand why the fuck I'm dividing a fraction. This doesn't make sense to me. It's like and <clears throat> and I definitely I mean, I probably didn't think about it as deeply as say Tycho or or Nyar do, do, does. But like fractions always stumped me as a kid, even even when I memorized everything. Even when I um figured out how to do things, math just didn't make sense because I walked into math. They told me a formula. I was like, fine, sure, I'll do the formula. But the, as I got older, I was like, why am I doing this? What is the point? Am I going to use this at some point in my life? Is this going to be, can I, can I like apply this to something else? Does, is this going like, and when I started to realize that it didn't matter that much to me, I started to suck really, really hard at math because I wasn't put into that mind space. Just memorize the formula, do the question, done. And like, and, and she just probably, she just was in this mindset at all times. When she was yeah. 10 years old, she just immediately hit this block. And that's why she, she didn't. Yeah, do and her family well like, like took the, the, it, it a step too far from a thing she does or doesn't do to a thing she is mm -hmm. or isn't. And, I, yes. uh, that, that, and that's really dangerous to do to a child. I'm, it absolutely I'm actually, is. I'm actually kind of surprised like, that, that her insecurity doesn't show as much in the, in the present day story. Mm -hmm. like, like, I think she has learned to adapt, adapt a lot. Like she, yeah. She's had yeah. all these kinds of lessons. Her insecurity does show or like, only in this very significant moment where she like, breaks down because like, the old people are saying marry Toshi and she runs away because yes. she like, can't handle the imposter syndrome anymore. She can't handle like, feeling like she's just smuggling herself into this. Uh, kind of lifestyle. Yeah. This is like kind of where insecurity comes yeah, through. Yeah, definitely. And I guess also the entire like pervasive idea of these memories like coming back to her and having her reevaluate all her life and choices so far and this trip being such a contemplative experience is, like shows some insecurity in a like broader, more existential sense. Yeah, and 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 it's all obviously brought out in the the finale, which I think we should uh, talk about uh, some, oh, yeah. sometime soon. But I think we should. If if we have any stray thoughts or questions to wrap up before we get to the, the the big issue of the finale and what what we even like supposed to get out of this movie. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So okay, I, Jubes. Go ahead, Jubes. Okay, yeah. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting and a question that Nyard asked me about back when we were talking about like the, the stylistic differences between um the present and the past. Another thing that I thought was interesting is it not only is it just cool to see the the, the nice wash the, the washed out look of the backgrounds in comparison to the characters who are way brighter. Um but it all, again it just like reflects that feeling of familiarity. Like when I, I have like this memory, and I will always have this memory of 
the my parents shutting off the electricity in my house when I would come back from home because I would always go on the internet and I wasn't allowed to do that. So I'd have to walk to the library all the time when I was in like elementary school to high school. And I can memorize the path. I know exactly where to go. But the thing is, is like, it's so familiar, my town. I've been here for 20 years. I remember all the houses. I remember like, I remember all these things. And, but over time, obviously things have changed and I don't notice them because the town itself is familiar. The route I walk down to and from the, the library to my house is so familiar that I don't notice anything specifically like, um, like the one scene where things seem really, really, really washed out, right. Is the scene that is the memory that Tycho has where the, the boy who has a crush on her stops right, her on in her the, way the back sun from, setting uh, in the horizon really yeah and the background. sun setting yeah yeah it's a beautiful beautiful scene right and i think like obviously there's there's this 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 feeling like you know everything's scaling back because th- she remembers like this emotion obviously of the of the boy stopping her but it's also it could also be framed as if this is a regular walk back home from school she doesn't care about the houses doesn't care about like all of these other things to a kid. This is just her path. She's going from school to home and everything is scaling back and all of it's fading away because it doesn't really matter to a kid. And what matters more than anything else is not the buildings. It's not like the random building is going to show up in her path. It's the person blocking her way back home, which is the boy that likes her. And like, and this is something that, that permeates a lot within the memories. Why are the people so much more important in the memories? Because people stick out more in your memory yeah. than an environment, especially when you're young. The, when you're young, the people that like shape you, the people who, who you think shaped you in, in most ways, impact you so much more. You remember them. Um, you remember what they've done. You remember the feelings you had when they did things to you. You remember like <clears throat> all of this, but you probably don't, specifically remember in much detail the trees that lined your house or the way a person's roof looked like or unless it unless it stuck out to you unless it like really stuck out to you in another memory probably with another person it wouldn't it doesn't really matter and like and that's why like um and then in that like again i feel like it's it's not only like a really interesting artistic flourish to differentiate the memories with the reality yeah, but definitely. it's also just accurate it's really accurate yeah, and uh, and that's what makes it again even like these memory scenes that seem a little bit more anime like um and not as realistic seeming yeah, feel authentic catch, anyway to capture something about how we think how about the past yeah. and i think like in in a way like um, the present yes. al- also feels a lot more present. Like uh, the, w- what you were talking about, like how you don't remember yes. what the tree looked like, but like when you're out in, in like walking in the woods or something, you notice those kinds of things. Uh, like, and so it, it basically, the movie saves all its uh, mono no aware for the present scenes, all, all, the, all the little just pausing and looking, the, 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 yes. the, su- the sunrise when she first arrives at the farm. It's a, yes. it's a great example of that. Like, like you oh wouldn't my have god! That yeah, I actually think so uh, we reached the peak of that style of the memory thing in that little scene with the the, the boy, with the boy talking to her. Yeah. And she has her first little love oh, because it's so, um, it's so cute. It's like you say you um, you don't remember the trees or anything, and and it's like that's one of the things where like I think maybe in that scene the buildings like the most faded out yes. and is like the least yes. detail in the background as possible. Yeah. And then she literally runs and like flies into the sky because she doesn't remember anything other than like that raw emotion. Yeah, until until like she she doesn't, gen- it all blanks is out at that point. Gently lowered onto the bed. Into onto her, her bed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, speaking of um, stylized moments, like the most stylized moments, there's one moment that really confuses me, and that's oh. at around an hour and five minutes into the film. Um, she she's talking to uh the the girl uh at, at the farm who's like really yes. relating to her and and she's explaining the whole thing with the with the shoes she would like i think they were pumas or what is what's pumas, that yeah. pumas they're uh, a horrible brand yeah. continue. and uh and and they they, they sort of have, have this little moment of bonding and make a promise to each other and then they uh they touch each other's fingertips <laughs> And then it freeze frames and makes like a Sistine Chapel or like E.T. Yeah. thing. 
And it's yeah, the it's only like, moment, um, I think, in the present day. Like, like, talking to Adam or something. It's yes, the, the yes, it's that painting. painting. Very weird. Yeah. I, I have no idea what that comes. And what, actually, what the, the Pumas as well. There's a thing where like a, the Puma logo like flashes yes, on screen, like, right. which <laughs> is really weird. It, also, that as well. I don't know if they had a sponsorship deal with Ghibli or something. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, what the fuck? That was that was quite a bizarre, like stray stylistic thing. Because maybe like, because uh, I think maybe like Takata was just playing around with some of the elements. Because as we saw, there's there's a neat little shot where she walks into the house where she's staying, and she looks into one of the side rooms, and her family and herself yes, as a ten year yeah. old is sitting in there. So clearly yes. he was like like yeah, I say like, it uh, like Con does. He was trying to just play around with styles, and these are probably just some stray thoughts he had that I guess don't come up <laughs> any later. But they are like, <laughs> like, very weird they? and I think, particular. I think the, I think yeah. I think the best explanation I have is he's trying to um to connect her childhood experience to uh, to to this uh, a teenage girl like like her, oh, yeah. her, her that, yes. that that bigness of uh of the little promise with the yeah. o- older sister type, yeah, it's a promise, uh, yeah. she, uh, that uh, Taiko is for her and, and the whole like, that seems bam, to be like poom, a connection the, moment the power of, course, of brand yeah. the power of brand just yeah, to, just no, it's, like, it's not a good Puma advertisement because by the end, like the girl is like, "Oh, I don't even need these stupid shoes anymore." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving a, up on the Pumas. It, it might be part of like, like how, I'm gonna, I'm gonna how it's, it's a cycle, money, how yeah. like others can learn from her as well. I think that's the best explanation. But, but maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe I'd, just... I'd rather get beat my by my dad again than wear these Pumas. You know I mean... what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, maybe again, it's just like a stray thought that's got through and and. Maybe it's just a little little thing. But yeah, Perfect exactly. Perfect to let you into because you're talking about the one transition scene, or like one of the one transition scenes where, which isn't like in a train uh, between the past and the future, where like deliberately there's like a melding of it, where like the she looks into the house and there is her family sitting at the table in the farmhouse for some reason. And then we transition. Like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all mm. of the other ones happen in trains. Yeah, yeah the other mm. ones happen in going to and coming from the place which i really did like it's like the 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 space in between the country and the city yeah uh, and, you the, know, the like, trains yes, really yes, well the, the trains have always had like a very through. prominent thing in like a lot of japanese media like people take trains everywhere they're this like symbol of like a gate almost yeah for example moving in between but with the other you know also but uh let's get into also a bit later because i just want to collect finish off this, yeah. this stray thought first which is like the train is obviously connecting space and time in this way. Because entering yeah. the train, it's kind of her entering her cocoon or her, her chrysalis. Because she talks about like the butterfly being does. like chrysalis and so on. She does. And when she lies there in the bed in the train and the thinking about the past memories and the curtains are shut, this is her chrysalis. Like she's like isolating herself from the world and going into herself, contemplating thinking. And the way her past accompanies her on the train ride means that she's not just moving into a different like area in a spatial terms but also in a different time like mentally and it sticks with us throughout the entire travel so the trains are like kind of these transient uh connections because when she, well, the train is where we have most frequently the scenes where yes. the kids appear the uh, the other kids like running around on the train looking at her and just playing around on the train yes. and so on and so on and this is also what happens on her way back because her kid selves appear and we're going to talk about the ending soon but just her kid self and turns other kids around. of her memory appear and like urge her to turn around so there's this 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 transit transition just yeah. means something definitely she says like carrying her 10 year old self with her on this travel meant something very important here but before we go to talk about this aspect, I think, because this is like the really important stuff with Abe and the train at the very end. Um, one last stray thought that I have, and maybe someone else still has also some. Um, I want to compare like the idea of um, acting more than the lines that you are giving uh, given in the play. I want to compare that to her idea of uh, rejecting like the single one formula that is told to her that would make her life easy, basically dividing fractions. Because... This is really what she does, right? She doesn't want it to be easy, but she realizes at some point that even though you're just giving these, given these lines, because basically this is what you get, this is what you have now f- for life, for what to make of this. She puts in her all her heart and all her efforts to make out of that what she was given, yes. the lines, the best she could do. Because, and this is really what characterizes her the most for me, yeah. that she put this emphasis, this... uh 
deep like reverence and this this care into acting into having it be a strong emotional scene and for me this was a very strong like point like no matter what your lines are what lines you are prescribed basically what the idea of normalcy is for example like what is supposed to be normal you can act in between the lines you can flesh it all out with your own little experiences and authenticity and stories and emotions yes. and this is like a very profound moment for me yeah the the, in, the interiority i think is the the term for it in uh, in in acting in uh, in in film especially like like the idea that you think deeply about what any yes. character is doing yes. with what they're saying as well that like and but I, I think it's that's a really beautiful sentiment yeah the the idea of like even if you know your lines there, there's there's there can be strength to like the yes. way you act them out and and that that's yeah. what makes you you um I, I yeah, want, this yeah. is also the performativity right yeah, lines yeah. are given to you but it is your performance your decision to imbue them with a certain uh with a certain like power that gives them life that makes yes. them real or appear to be real and also think uh what you said about travel is a really really great point because like the, the way uh like we've we've already talked about and i think talking about the the finale we'll also talk about how the movie uses time is re really central to the whole mm. that's the whole conceit but the way it uses uh space and traveling between spaces is also really significant like traveling from a place to another place as uh, as like a place of contemplation and uh, and getting to somewhere within yourself like first with the train ride going out to the countryside and like the, the whole cocoon thing and then like there's a reason why so many of her conversations with or at least like two of the most significant conversations she has um with toshio happens yes. in a car while they're traveling oh yeah like n not not just like to the farm while while like talking about what the farm means but also like just traveling wherever just ju just to travel there's there's something how, like there to, to like go, yeah, somewhere. Just go somewhere how amazing is this contrast between the huge train in which you are alone versus the tiny car in which there's someone with you with whom you're having yeah. deep conversations yeah, yeah it's it's, really it's again great. it's again just showing like that yeah it is like a deep and interesting contrast the other thing that i thought was a little thing that i noticed at least both times where they're <clears throat> where they're in the car it's raining or it has or it has rained they, they comment on like um like it have has already rained or it was raining they're shielding themselves from it going back to the, that little tiny theme about how memories keep they they tumble down they keep tumbling down yeah they drizzle yeah. they they uh yeah and come uh, trickling down like like rain yes. like puddle puddle yes. that's puddle the puddle. sound of rain falling. yeah and the interesting thing, like, obviously at the um the start when they're in the car right it's already rained the memories had already came flooding back when she was on the train when she steps yeah, exactly, off exactly yeah the memories like like the memories have stopped for a second now she could talk with toshio about the present what's the farm what are they doing you know what are his passions and then in the rain when she's alone that's like showing how like the memories flood in a way that's so obtrusive and scary and she could barely comprehend which one's which and and this is going to be like the obvious thing so i'm going to try to not maybe a fun enough transition but because the no, I th it's like I think there's one more thing there. Yeah, so like the the rain symbolizes all of the memories that are rushing at her at a current at like all at the same time, where she gets it. But when she gets into the car, she's not assaulted by the memory. She can now focus on one, and that like, um, and and again like like the once the memory is over, the rain is the rain is gone, and they can walk out and appreciate a view. And I think that that like um it's definitely it definitely has like a it's a very subtle not subtle it's in the title but you know yeah. what i mean it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah no i i i completely understand like that and it's it's such a great little uh thing with when it rains and uh and it also ties into the whole countryside vibe because like it, it really changes the way they do things when it starts raining yes. like we have that whole scene where we see how they carefully gather up all the uh the, the dry yes. safflower dye just uh, because it needs to get away from the rain so it's it, rain. it's practical in that sense and it gives like this physicality to the environment that that like enhancing the backgrounds and the foreground but uh mm -hmm. I, but there's also exactly that element of 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 memory of uh, confusion of contemplation 
and then of clarity with uh, the skies clearing and the, the, the sunshine. I mean, it's it, it might have been over the top, but I'm still surprised there's no rainbows in this uh, at any point. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of glad that there's yeah, no rainbow. Yeah. I mean, a, a nighttime rainbow would oh, have been done. Oh, but the I, mm, yeah. Oh, co continue, please. I have another stray thought that yeah, I'm gonna yeah, say continue. after. Oh, okay. But yeah, it, it was just like I'm. I'm also glad it probably would have been like cute, but I think a lot of people have been like, "Oh, fuck off!" Like that's not. Like, it's like super unsubtle, and that's not really Takahata's style. Takahata likes to be more subtle. So yeah, as subtle whatever. as big ball <laughs> Tanuki like slapping on the police. Uh, well, whatever. <laughs> no, fuck off. As, no, as I, subtle as the scene in which they're farming, and then the sun comes over the horizon, and one person yeah, literally about turns it? to pray towards the sun <laughs> as they live in their like idealic farm life. That's whatever. Religious <laughs> or shut up with you. Okay, whatever. You know what? It's also again, uh, but that is also kind of cute. How like again, she's not religious, but she also prays because she wants to mimic, like the the grandma praying to the sun. But, um, like again, okay, maybe Takata is not as <laughs> subtle as I want him to be. I don't want to. I don't want to watch Pom Poco. So I don't want to <laughs> look on, at man. Tanuki's the, the nut sacks. Sex. No, uh, you're, you're scared of them. <laughs> they intimidate I'm you. I'm scared of the nut sacks, dude. I don't want to do it. Okay, oh, whatever. <laughs> it was rough. Okay, we're gonna. Uh, now you had some fun. Uh, yes. Um. Because. Yes. Give me a moment. <laughs> Is what? Oh, the uh, color red. Like, I wanted to bring up the color red because that's. A oh huge yes, one. yes. Like uh, Hipsa uh, pr provided some screen caps here that perfectly fit. Notice how in every frame of her childhood self, she wears something red. Like literally every outfit has some red like part on it. The redness is she kind has of the red hair her color. indicative color of her like childhood. She always identifies with that. Her adult self predominantly wears blue. And what I find interesting yes. is how she reconnects with this kind of authenticity is through making this red dye and through studying how this color red that kind of defined like her childhood came to be. For me... And this is maybe, <sighs> maybe very, uh, uh, no, he's a fucking Marxist. Who am I kidding? This <laughs> is, an, is a moment of class consciousness <laughs> because yeah. her upbringing is kind of bourgeois. Like she lives in a nice house, even post-war Japan, pre-economic like growth and so on. Like her parents are very well off. She's, he has all this luxury of affording like the good clothes. And of course she gets hands me, head me downs, but like she has nice clothing. She's, she's well off. She gets the she doesn't like anything. Her, her her encounter with Abe yeah. then is also like another one of these class conscious encounters, but we're going to get into this very soon. For me, yes. the point about the redness is, redness is mm -hmm. we got to keep in mind that when she takes off the gloves and gets pricked by the thorns, she realizes that poor workers have worked here without gloves, without protection to harvest like a uh, uh, dye that they could not afford. And we have this scene where she like yes. happily like dyes like a piece of cloth from like the residue that is left over, which is which is then the little anecdote that back in the day, like the mm -hmm. poor the poor farm girls, basically, the only way to bring a like, color into their life was like to use like the leftovers and dye their clothes pink with this light. Uh, with their own blood. Dye. Yeah, it's it's yeah, not she, really she, all that subtle, honestly. <laughs> it's not really all that subtle, but it, she realizes in this moment like kind of a connection to her past. And this is this this double movement of this film like right at the same time this authentic work connects her to her childhood the color red reappears but at the same time she learns about the weight and value of this color red and what it actually meant for people back in the day and yes. what she kind of experienced as sort of a privilege in her entire life and i think this is very like uh, amazing and also and detail. also it it totally fits in like it's the same thing with the pineapple it's old status symbols becoming normal like yeah. it's it, yes. it's it's this like fr frivolousness and not really like understanding no, properly yeah. the things that you oh. wear and eat uh, and, and and that's yes. a part of like th th that's a part of the message of, of the movie like the the point of the organic farming is to like honestly like look at and understand how things we take for granted came about and yes i think that whole and, uh, things we take mm. for granted and how it came about is a really important point uh, of the movie oh yeah no it, it repeats many times obviously there's obviously the the class um meeting where all the kids are having and one of Tycho's like childhood friends comes up and talks like she does the dumb conservative thing. Do you know children are starving in Vietnam? You should eat all of <laughs> right, that scene. This is like um the the like but like that is you know in a way absolutely true. There are people who are far less fortunate than you and you want to waste food like that like it is people taking for granted their position. 
whereas other people would love to eat the stuff that they throw the, to eat the stuff that they throw away and the like and like that just permeates a lot of it just permeates a lot of things in a way she she is spoiled as a kid she is spoiled um but in some way she's yeah, not she's spoiled and but like it doesn't that, mean that, it's that, a perfect childhood at all like it it, it means yes, she has difficulty yes. like de- determining like what has value and, and when she what she actually wants because like she yes. will get it uh that, that that's yeah. the, the whole scene with the bag is is again one of those like stubbornness and mm-hmm. uh like not really understanding what she should value i mean it, it, it's it's cr- yes. it's christmas as a kid all over again like you 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 just mm-hmm. put that thing on the wish list that was the biggest thing in on the uh, on advertisement between cartoon network shows and you you were not all the, that <laughs> happy with it <laughs> Yeah, we also get another, like a little bit with that where um, her mother tells her that she can't tell anyone that she was chosen first for oh, the that, acting That's such thing. a good scene. Yes. And it's like you really have to like consider other people's feelings. Like you can't just go around like that. Like imagine how she was in that position. Yeah, and th- that's an it's example of like... There's an element of pretending there, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, that's part it, of it's the also performance like, It's also well. like a, 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 a pretty like good memory to have because it's a really important lesson and like like so it's not all like disappointments and uh, sadness that there are like valuable things in there but um yes yes and legitimately um this is the thing that made me absolutely love this movie it's just so 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 complex you can look at almost everything there's always multiple layers to a scene to a way person acts to the memories where they all flow together there's so much you can talk about and that like interesting complexity and nuance in almost every single scene is what makes me love this movie. It's two fucking hours long. I probably yeah, talk about this. We're for almost days. talking about it as long and as I think we're gonna talk about it as long as the movie is. We're, we're gonna is. crack that time yeah, out again. We're gonna crack that two hours again. Jeez, guys. After Let's Kiki see. was so short and concise, we're gonna crack that again. <laughs> no, uh, I, I I think um uh I was about to say something, and the thing I was about to say is I think yeah, that's why uh many like like reviews especially from the west comment on how adult it feels and like yeah. obviously like we love animation we love totoro it doesn't have to be adult to be uh taken seriously but it's definitely yes. like meant as a compliment and it's because of that emotional mature complexity that yes. uh, that that isn't present in many animation films and I, yes I, it usually yeah. isn't present in animation i, I, they, I think like <sighs> the the just admittance of just like just again just multiple different facets about how like she's obviously upper class she's well off but she still struggles how the but like again how her her how her younger self doesn't seem to understand that maybe her parents and her and her sisters struggle um but obviously like if you see like tiny little quips you see that they probably do sometimes she even looks at how like like an an old woman sitting on used newspapers on the tracks that might be that might mean something yeah like why is it shown but like it it, it pro- there probably is some nuance to it it ties to something definitely you know and and like and um it's just oh yeah holy. it's a gr- it's, great it's, great film i mean uh Definitely. Yeah, it is absolutely. Um, that there's, yeah. there's just just a couple of things until, uh, and then I'll transition mm-hmm. us into like the the, the finale, the and, final uh, thing, and yeah. final thoughts. Um, first of all, um, that uh, TV show that she sings the um, <gasps> oh my yeah, god, the, the puppet. It's an actual. It's an actual show. Uh, I, 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 I had really. To, uh, I, I looked this up when I uh, encountered it. So the. The show that she's watching is uh, Shokuri Hyotan Island, which aired from 1964 to 69. So it's right there. It's, it's perfect. Um, the episode that's shown is apparently loosely based on an actual episode of this, the show. But one character is added, uh, a, a well-known character from the, from the show who wasn't in the episode is added. And some of the mo- more well-known songs from the show is added. So it kind of like fits like how you remember a show. Like every all the important things in one episode, <gasps> yeah. Instead of like, oh right, that was a completely different episode. <laughs> that's <laughs> really, that's yeah, really, for, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, we also see the bit where she imagines herself like on the 
the like the cover with all the characters. Oh yeah. my god! Um, she's she's a famous yeah. TV personality. I think that was, think that was really show. cute. Um, yes, it was very cute. And, and the songs, yeah. of course, like how perfectly, like not only like Toshio and Taiko talking about the songs, but also like when she like gets gets turned down from the from the acting thing, like the song, this poor boy, yeah. <laughs> stupid song starts playing, and she begins like singing. Yeah, it yeah she starts. Yeah, she starts singing down. the other song. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's so another good. song, exactly, exactly, like the opening or something. Yes, but like it, it also gets like like into two things that are, that are really important, like the theme of nostalgia, like like the, the yes, uh, which I'll definitely get into soon. Um, like, are you saying this movie she... comments on nostalgia? Are oh you really? yeah, <laughs> I, I think so. I, th- that's my interpretation. Like, I know it's mm-hmm. it's a bit of a reach, yeah, but like like the, how they bond over it, and that's like a, yes, a, a commonality between them. That that also shows like the. The master animators' appreciation of like classics and what they mean to people. Yes, but also like the song about like there's always tomorrow, and what that <gasps> means to them. And uh, I think yes. like the translated title "Only Yesterday" is a really good title as well because the way they talk, the way they frame tomorrow and yesterday, um, Toshio and uh, uh, and uh, Taiko. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting because she sees it as as this sort of this sigh, yeah. and then oh well, I guess we'll give it another shot. But like he sees it more as like, man, I I, I can't wait for what tomorrow. Yeah, comes. that's actually. I, I think that's a really yeah, interesting. Yeah, no, that's uh, even reflected between them. It's even reflected in the title. If you if you if like the the Japanese title talks about memories tumbling down, being kind of obtrusive, being like all encompassing. Whereas in the English title, it's only yesterday. But like yeah again it's it's right there like it's it's very present it's, oh that's um, so cool yeah <sighs> okay uh and i think it's time to talk about the finale but uh i th- uh, i wanted to mention because we've mentioned him a lot of times yashujiro osu oh boy so for those for those of you who don't uh like know who he is he's one of the biggest uh japanese film directors like ever Mm. He uh he he made a bunch of uh classic uh films uh through the um fifties and, uh, and and sixties and also like forty he, he made a lot of movies, uh, lot of in, movies in the middle of the uh, century mm. and um what he, he's very known for his um his uh what that's a Japanese word for it called a, a gendai geki, which basically just means present day like contemporary drama. Um, which is as opposed to Jidai Geki, uh, which, for, for example, Akira Kurosawa is more known for, which are like samurai films and period Historical pieces. drama. Yeah, yeah, historical drama. So, um, so Yasujiro Osu, um, uh, there's a lot of, tr- many traces of him in, in this film, specifically with uh, the themes of marriage and the big life decisions and the indecision uh, people face and like um, family life and obligations. Uh, so the whole framing, the story around the decision whether to get married and who and with whom, and getting on with your life—that's very uh, Osu. But also yeah. in the visuals, like uh, yeah, Osu was particularly famous for his interior shots, which used um, which we used deep uh, photography to keep everything in focus, and uh, used the foreground and background uh, to to add a, a lot of depth and uh, careful blocking of the characters and kept at eye level. Uh, to, to what the characters were doing. Um, another yeah, thing was like, like the one yeah. in traditional houses, like people sitting exactly. on the ground at the low, like Japanese kind of tables. You wouldn't also movies encounter very like highly detailed shots with exactly the kind of deep photography that you're talking about. Very reminiscent of many scenes in like only yesterday, especially like by the end when the family is sitting around the table and, and yeah, when, with, the, with the grandma, cream. with the grandma yeah. sitting there. And I, I even noticed how the use of color, uh, uh, also would often put, uh, sp- particularly strong colors e- either in the foreground or the background or both to like, like just to enhance the sense of depth and, uh, and help the viewer in a way. And, uh, and, and I noticed that in a few sh- shots as well. And like when you mentioned red as a significant color, yeah. that was pretty interesting. Uh, like the the only thing that's uh, the, only, the only, one key difference is there's not a lot of Japanese salarymen getting shit faced, um, <laughs> which <That's true. laughs> so it's definitely not an Osu movie. Um, yeah, but but there's pillow shots, there's which were very common in uh, Takahata style, which Osu was kind of very very famous for. Um, you ha- we have 
And this is a very explicit reference even. We have like the start opening credits are like shown on like a burlap sack with the credits on top of it. This is a famous device that Ozu used, for example, for the film Floating Weeds. So this is a kind of like very deliberate invocation yeah. there. It's clearly it like also just, yeah. Yeah. a master director so, giving a yeah. shout out to a master director. Yeah. And also like only yesterday's similarities to Ozu don't even end there because... Um, you brought up like the marriage plot and so on. Like, I want to specifically compare it to Tokyo Story, uh, which is like arguably Ozu's like most that's, famous film. That's I guess. high mm. praise. Also. Yeah, there's there, there's a comparison, but also like thematically, uh, Tokyo Story also has a train that kind of connects like a rural life where old the old people live that come visit their family in the city, and they uh, encounter their like a work culture or corporate culture that has all their family busy and like moving on with their lives and not really like able to pay attention to them anymore. And like there's this pervasive sense of Mono no Avari as like these old people who are the protagonists of the movie, an elderly couple being the protagonist of a movie, which is something I rarely, rarely encountered, like slowly realizing this sort of complacency in this world, like this, this slow fading because this modernization of the city and this alienation that we're describing also about the city in only yesterday is also happening there and it's happening to everyone's lives there and their lives are just now oriented around that and the train is also there a device that connects stages of life like i don't know a uh, spoiler alert for a movie that is like kind of 80 years old or whatever there's, um, there's a death in the family there's a death in the family that is conveyed through a train ride yeah that there's like a fading of like from one stage into the next. We could argue that Takahata like takes this kind of similar device, but goes in the opposite direction. Instead of old people coming to the city and realizing like that they're, they're kind of like their time is over, there are young people going out of the city and finding a new way to live, to escape kind of from the city, which is almost like the opposite message of Tokyo Story. And it's very like, like empowering, I find. Yeah. And uh, that's... Uh as good a time as any as to talk about so we um we, we we get the sense at the start of the movie that uh that taiko is sort of uh kind of in a rut and sh and she needs to uh, and she goes out on this vacation hoping to find something meaningful and she takes her uh her younger self with her and she specifically says like apart from the whole uh being a caterpillar turning into a butterfly Fly thing, uh, she like specifically says, it's like uh, these memories are asking me to give me an opportunity to rethink my life, and I, and I think the whole rethinking leads us to the finale where she's confronted with this proposition, this marriage proposition from the uh, from the old lady, which brings to the like the forefront these things going on in the background of uh, of her life, like what does oh, yeah. she actually want. And w what is her relationship to uh, Toshio, and d and how does it all fit together? So the ending. Uh, she, Abe is yeah. such a microcosm. Abe is such a exactly. fantastic microcosm of she the entire film. She meets uh, Toshio in a car, and they uh, and talks about this specific memory that just came to her like a flash of lightning, much like the storm going on around them. And uh, yeah, it, Abe, the poor kid uh, who sat next to her. And was really mean to her, but like obviously had a like weird boy crush, and she pretended to be nice to him. She says yeah. hiding her disgust because she was she yes. said she was likely the the one who hated him the most or like disliked him the, the most, but she pretended to be kind, like never participated in the gossip and so on. Which is which is interesting. Yeah. So well, what what, 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 are, what are your thoughts on like the yeah yeah. We've already talked about the decision to like take the uh, train back, the bus back. Yeah. But um. So in like this specific instance, I, it honestly, God, there's so much. So I'm, God, it's talk about shit. But it's it's honestly, I I do believe that she's she's lying to herself that she hated him the most because there are mul there are multiple times where like like if she. If she hated him the most, why did she not want people to gossip? Why did she... Um, what? But also, like, why did she imitate him? Like, yeah. she encountered him on the street when she, when, when she saw him with, with his dad, and he was, like, kind of timid, and then suddenly seeing her, he was being all tough and, like, spitting, and his dad was like, bomb, here you go, on your, on yeah. your head, like, knocking him Don't be a over. bum, yeah. Yeah, don't be a bum, don't, don't be filthy. 
Uh, and then she started imitating him, just kind of like this idea of trying to connect to this person. But also, yes. I think the disgust was at the same time real. Like, yeah, she was yeah. disgusted by him. Because this is, again, this class consciousness that I like, alluded to earlier. The yeah. idea of, like, now she is among farmers, among, like, not wealthy people, like, among people of lower societal standing, and she needs to confront her past. Of why was she like this towards Abe? Has she gone ab above and beyond this kind of phase in her life where she was, like, kind of, like, not class conscious, let's just stuck in her like kind of uh, sheltered lifestyle. Can she now yeah. accept someone like Abe? Why was she feeling this conflicted way towards Abe? And then Toshi arrives and helps her think through this. Abe yeah. was pretending to be an asshole to hide his affection. She was pretending to be nice to hide her disgust. But ultimately, like, there is not an unsurmountable difference that they couldn't have surmounted. But like, yeah, yeah, this there's like layers of pretending and appearances that is like obfuscating between them. And uh, um, Toshi is like, listen, he was probably into you. And this is such a revelatory moment for her because she realizes that yeah. he also is like her, just someone who's like yeah. pretending in his way along through life. And she sees through that now and it sorts a lot out for her. I, 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 I think yeah. the whole... Also, I think it's kind of clear. Maybe, maybe it's just my rig, but it's very clear that like um, Taiko is like very clueless when it comes to any kind of like romantic f feelings. Yeah, she... Like we see with the the, yeah. the original uh, boy who's on the baseball team. Uh, like she doesn't like even know how to act. Like she just it, it kind of goes along with what her friends say because that's the only way she knows how to yeah, interact. Yeah, she's told. And then with Arbe, that he's into and her. And then most yeah. most obviously with like like I said, she's clearly being like set up with Toshino. She's going on dates <laughs> with him, but like she doesn't realize this. It has to be like literally yeah, said to her face yeah. that they want her to marry him before yeah, she, she even she's like pretty dense. I, I relate. <laughs> um, no, but the um, the whole I, I think it's really interesting that uh, that parallel where. Uh, Abe pretends uh, to hate her, and she pretends to like him. But, but they're both like they're both somewhere in the middle. Like, like they he he can pretend all all he wants, but like the feeling is still there. And yeah. even Toshio can notice it from like twenty years in the future. And like she can like think all she wants yes. about him, but like our actions are really what define us, and like our, our authenticity. Yes comes just as much from our actions as it does from our feeling uh, yeah that's what i thought ultimately the uh, won't, he won't shake her hand thing uh boiled down to where he didn't want to like almost pretend to her because yeah. he mm -hmm. had to shake everyone's hand as this like ritualistic uh pre yep. like uh performance of like oh yeah. you know respect and everything but he didn't fucking like any of exactly. them exactly and so that was like a big lie that he was, was doing. A big so act he never shook her hand because he, yeah, he didn't want to like be lying to her of all people. I think another really important part of the the, the scene is they're sitting in the car during the rain, and it's I, I I'm not sure it's one of the only scenes of like her just explaining a memory yes, instead of being yes. shown uh, most oh, yeah. of it. Like uh, and uh, and like they get inside. Away from the, they're sheltered from the rain, and again, mm -hmm. rain and memories going together in this movie, um, and and that gives her like space to talk about it and what it means instead of just depicting it, and also it gives space. She, she lets Toshio in to her thoughts and to a memory, and give, lets yeah. him think about it. That that the few sh like most of the shots in this scene, yes, both of them in the frame. Like even yes. like overlapping faces, uh, to to like show how like that there's an intimacy there. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's yeah. re really interesting. It is really interesting, and like, it's 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 on again just just talking about like the complexity of actions. Obviously, like when it comes to Taiko, she she is thinking a little bit too simple. You know, she thinks that oh he's just he's he. She thought that his pretending act was real, that he hated her and that she hated him, but she but she's the pretender, thinking in these very simplistic terms. And then Toshio comes in and says, Well, that's not true. And yeah. the and like it opens up this idea that like like that people sometimes people's like acting, something like the way people act like the way people pretend seems real to others. And the only person who can really suss out, like if you're faking it, it needs to be either something, somebody very close to you or only yourself. 
And that's why, like, she's so critical of herself and how she pretends and how she acts. But to everyone else around her, they, like, to everyone around her, like, they still enjoy the fact that she's there. There's a reason why the the people in the countryside want, like, you want her to marry. They want her to be there, right? They do, they don't think that she like. The only time where it feels as if there's there's this little inkling that they think of her as an outsider is when they're arguing over like her being married. And again, that scene is again layered with complexity, and everyone is wrong. I want to say that like every single person in that scene is saying something stupid. <laughs> None of them are right. Um, like the the but like the 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 biggest deal with all of that right is that the underlying feeling she's is she may be acting she may be a city girl but they love her holy shit they love her so yeah. much and they they buy into this performance they see her genuine love for this way of life and they want her to be happy and that like and that that realization that there's so, there's so much complexity to this that she can live this life while acting and not feel so much as if she's faking it that she's a phony that she doesn't deserve to be here it's like ripping away that veil that weird that stumbling block that people have and realize how thin that layer of perception yeah. is I, on the way I, you I, live and I think that's really cool I, I think we've really uh excavated a lot of the, this whole the idea of pretension and uh how you act and, and uh authenticity yeah. and how that sort of insecurity is really central to her character um but but i i think I still believe that the mo the most central theme yeah. in the entire movie is nostalgia. Oh yes, and yes. I, and that's what I really want to get into here at the end. Oh yeah, the idea and uh, I have yeah. such a great quote on this. I read this in in in, in an article. I'm gonna link my sources in the in the description Sick. as always. Um, yeah, th there aren't a lot of sources this time around. Ah, uh, sad, not a lot yeah. of fighting. Oh, yeah, there aren't. Again, like uh, only really had a resurgence in the West in uh, uh, but, 2016. Yeah. But, but here's the message, uh, the the point. I think it's a quote from Justin Savarkis, mm -hmm. like a very well known writer on anime. And it, the, the, the the what he said is that the message of this movie is simple: your past is not trying to hold you back. It may in fact be leading you somewhere your heart desires. Should you choose to listen to it? Yes, that's yeah. that's a great one. Yes, uh, because and I've tied this into my theory on like the uh, idea of naturalization with the following idea that. The past reveals to us how that what has become naturalized was always like man-made. It's always like some process between childhood and now, yes. which has made these, which has set these rules or these unspoken rules or unwritten rules yeah. in stone. But they're always all man-made. You can always like choose to follow your desires, which their childhood reveals to you and goes past this veil of pretensions and layers. Yes, the that's that's definitely a great way to like uh, pull it all together. Mm -hmm. Um, I I had the, I had some different thoughts. Oh that. yeah, Jubes, do you want? Oh yeah, uh, you, you yeah. Want... I just I I kind of just wanted to expand off of Nyar's thing because you you may talk about something different, right? You might have a different interpretation. Um, the way Tycho treats her childhood and her memories is how most people treat their childhood itself. Like he's silly, silly, inconsequential. You know, things you can look at and laugh about. Um, she says like. She says she never even intended for her 10 year old self to come with her on that trip. When she went on the train, the first thing she says, I never intended for my 10 year old self to tag along. Yeah, but the moment she never did, she would that. never leave me alone. We never intend yeah. that. Like, it, yes, it's exactly. It's not our fault that we, we have never... passed. Like, it can't, exactly. can't shake it. And there's so many, like, like a big thing. It's, it's very interesting. Obviously, she's, she's definitely in conflict because whenever somebody tells her to let go of the past, like when she's on that phone call with her sister, she gets this weird look like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Let go of the past. That's my past. I remember it. Yeah, but like and then but when she goes on the train, it says she wants to leave that behind. She wants to leave her Tokyo life behind. She wants to do this. And but at the same time, like, <clears throat> what? What actually ends up happening, obviously, is that there's something that is to be learned from her 10 year old self. Her 10 year old self had a desire, had a desire to live somewhere else, to be more authentic, to not want to conform to the way people live, to not do what people told her. And she faced, even though, like, yeah, she, she was a little bit privileged, and I would say that she definitely, you know, got punished a lot for trying to. Like for trying to do what she's 
kind of rejecting in her older life. It's it's really uh, it's it's really um it's really interesting. Like and it, it all ties into that nostalgic feeling. Like sometimes we look on things nostalgically and think, oh look at us, we're dumb kids. But like like Nyard would say, there's there's something to be learned. The things that we that we naturalize, we can look back and realize, wow, that was really silly. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> like why why did i think that that was yeah. normal why did i want to be normal in that way you yeah know? That, 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 um, that's definitely a big and then you could the flashbacks like like yeah. the, the the whole like yes. it's like especially the whole period sequence is just such a great such a great oh, exposure oh of like how yes. it's dumb our ideas of like <laughs> of, of g- girls and boys are just oh on. absolutely because you have because you have like you have like the older kid like the well she's not older she's she's a little bit more mature when she says you know periods aren't uh, they're not they're nothing to be ashamed of you know that girl is my idol but she, like she just she, yeah. she she gets to like not care about what other people think yeah exactly she's just like she's like yeah it's something to be ashamed of i told the boy i liked because i trusted him <laughs> this is not like oopsie you know like oopsie because then that boy told all the other boys who were idiots but you know the um at the end of the day she's like yeah no that's something to be ashamed of and like you see that um taiko does get weirdly obsessed with something that's just silly it's silly because the boys are dumb and they're emotionally they're they're emotionally unintelligent and they don't like um and they play it off as a joke as a sickness and that affects yeah. you as a kid, but when you look back on, you're like, "Wow, but I, I, that's <laughs> like, um, wow, why I did that happen to me?" W- one thing um, that really, uh, I really got caught up in, and I think many people get caught up in when they first watch this movie, especially viewers from the West, is how those memories, th- those specific, ch- the, the specific choices and what memories are shown, are, is really interesting because normally childhood in like uh, in narratives in cinema uh, are are one of two things: either there's the nostalgia. The, the the feeling that I want to return to this simpler, better time, which uh, is a yeah. is a powerful thing that many people feel. But like, it's also like the brain is the brain has a thing where it represses bad things to remember because it doesn't want to remember yes. them, and then yes. we only remember the good th- things anyway. Um, either that or it's uh, it's some kind of important, significant trauma that so- the that drives the character yeah. of the story. Those are like the two re- two motivations to show the past, but here. Uh, and that's why it's one of the first things I mentioned when we start, when we, we started this podcast so long ago, um, is like wh- why these memories? Like they, they they seem so they seem sort of incidental. They they are of course significant to her, but are they cinematically significant? Oh, um, I see. Yeah. And the reason why I, the, the the reason why I, the, that question sort of lingers is um, that. It, it it's so like true to life in that way. That's why I compared to uh, boyhood because it also shows like a relatively undramatic life, not really wanting for much, not really poor, not really super rich, not really sheltered, not really that spoiled. It's just j- just a life, and the way that these small moments like over time shape who you are. So, uh, and and, and somehow. She remembers those parts, like instead of the good parts, when she's thinking of uh, transitioning her life. Um, and in that way, it's not really a nostalgic story, but more a story about nostalgia yeah. and, 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 and not just her nostalgia. And I, th- I think that's why ah, yeah, uh, yeah. I consider nostalgia to be the, the biggest theme in this, um, because it also ties into um, a, a, a Toshio. And his uh, like relationship with his like uh, uh, childhood and returning to it after having been to the city, um, and it ties into the greater idea of uh, of nature of rural life because there's this sort of uh, I mentioned before this idea of uh, belonging not just to people but to a place. There's this sort of communal nostalgia for the for, for the this. Uh, this life, this unalienated labor, this uh, yeah, th- th- this way of life that they have out there, that that, that goes back for centuries and millennia, but um, but it also comments on this nostalgia by making us realize that 
this isn't just like the way it used to be. It's new. It's innovative. It uses t- new technological advances and uh, scientific uh, advances. And uh, it also, we also in- get to interrogate the the story sh- that p- people tell themselves. Yeah, and I oh, think that's a good one. I think that's like the main thing, like especially at the ending. Because like oh, yeah. what, what nostalgia really is is a story you tell yourself about the past, and the story she keep, she keeps uh, telling and uh, and and think about are like like the, the stories of like the little disappointments. Like she she says, oh, I, I was a selfish child, but but was she really? She uh she she has the uh, all this this whole thing with um g- g- getting married that's not a part of the story she's telling about herself, and the um and especially with the co- the conversation in the car about abe where she has the story she tells herself where there was this weird kid who really didn't like her and she pretended not to like him but she really she was deeply disgusted and she feels ashamed but like he tells her another story that's just as like valid a story about like a girl that was genuinely kind to a boy who liked her but didn't know how to show it and we see it again also in the way she talks about her uh, her acting prospects. She the the way she tells the story. It could be like the story of a life that wasn't like the, a, a decision made for her that made her something different. But she 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 kind of tells it as like a little disappointment, and she tried it out and wasn't for her. So and and we sit here and tell another story about what those flashbacks mean. Uh, to her and i th- i think that's like that's really the beautiful heart of it all yeah. is how it, like the, oh. the story n- not just what happened to you not just what other people did or what you did but what you tell yourself what story you tell yourself about that is the most mm-hmm. important it's the difference between like a b- being uh l- b- between these memories just appearing and uh, being obstructive and uh, annoying and confusing and letting them just be with you and let them push you towards the things that you want it it's all a matter of what story you tell um i don't, I don't know if I, I i entirely agree with that i do feel like there is to me the moral reading of like overcoming a trauma where like we we're saying all these little conflicts of a childhood they they grow into these larger traumas which is like quite freudian actually a lot of the the theming through that like this deep exploration of how all these childhood moments that even seem inconsequential can surmount into this big uh larger thing and particularly like the ending shot of the movie really sold this for me where it's like all the kids are like happy and they're running by them but then they all kind of like stand still as she walks away and uh then we cut to to like 10 year old taiko and she's just stood there with like completely like neutral expression and then like slowly everything like fades to black behind her and then like she fades to black so that's almost like to me more of like a, a death of those traumas and of those um insecurities as opposed to more of like a nostalgic look back at her past i i, I think I, I don't know I, I don't see it as that hard i think it's um I, I think that's it. It, it, I, yeah. it doesn't like they, they don't die. They just like fade away slightly. Yeah, but that, to me, I know the film language to me is like so stark with like the no, black I background. I think I think the, like the, the kids expression. are very excited and happy. They're like running around and like Toshi. But then the nail the stop. Like the very there's this, there's this moment stop. where yeah, she it's, walks it's, away. They stop and look really and melancholy. They, they're all kind of like. Yeah, there is a bit so of sweet like sense this weird to ambiguity to it. There's a bit of yeah. sweet sense of nostalgia. You're leaving behind the little girl, absolutely, but like it's not like a death. I think that's like kind of like a too much of a, a dark uh, way to phrase yeah. it. Yeah, but it, uh, I think bit of yeah, no, 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 it's it's genuinely just like she's being left behind for now. The memories may come back, and but it's a bittersweet parting. Yeah, you know? because te- oh, yes. the, the age of ten, sure. which is like start of puberty and periods and so on, and the age of twenty-seven, which is like considered this passing into like the maturity of like womanhood, is like phases of transition in your life. When Taiko wonders to herself, "Why did they appear to me like now?" It's I think because of this transitory stage in her in her in her, in her, in her life. 
this fading of the memories is because now the memories have helped her find her way through this transition. And I agree here with Platon because like the final couple of moments are like that she says goodbye and says next time I'll leave my 10 year old self at home. But as soon as she's in the train, her 10 year old self and friends appear and convince her to turn back around. This is a message we're taking. She's not leaving them at home, but she's compelled by them moving towards her new home. Yeah, I think that might as well be uh, where we, uh, we leave it off. I think that might as well be where we uh, leave it off. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's, I, maybe maybe the, the last thing I'll say is that exact bit of sweetness is to me all, always a sign of like yes. so, something that that's complex and resonates. Like like you you can't have it's not all happiness. It's not all yes. depressing. There's I I think it's a really lovely ending, and it it it's made me cry like twice. Yeah, oh. every time. <laughs> yeah. No. Yard, yard, yeah, like I, I almost, I, cr- I brought myself to tears twice, just explaining it when I watched it for the second time. It's, it's definitely like, like it's, it's, it's another one. Like saying something is bittersweet is just like directly communicating that it, this is a complex yeah. feeling. It is not going to be simple. You're going to have to think exactly, about and it. and we're, we're st- and we are and we are still thinking about it like to this day right now. Yes, and I'm, I'm, sh- I still have thoughts, and I'm sure you still have thoughts. But I think it's uh, about time to, yes. uh, to to wrap things up, uh, don't you? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I, I did have one last note right? that I remember. There was just one little scene that got to me. That I was Maybe I'm looking too much into it, but there's the, the scene on the train w- when they're leaving and mm-hmm. she's trying to say goodbye to them. And this is like typically where you'd have like a romantic goodbye in a film or something and then maybe she would oh, decide yeah. to stay. But like an old man kind of like bustles in the way awkwardly <laughs> and then yeah. stops and then the train is leaving. And then to me, I kind of read that as like, that's how she knows she wants to go back because you can't always say goodbye the way you want yeah, to. That's a great little moment and one of many. So yeah, you, you yeah. can't always, um, yeah, decide how you're going to end things. Yes, and things can be like yeah. cut off abruptly. So she just decides, all right, I have to make yeah, this That's actually now. interesting because that, that ties into the feeling that all of her memories and all the things that you feel unresolved, right? Even at the very end. She can't say goodbye and without it be feeling like there's something missing. And that like finally at the very end, the ending of the movie is where a resolution happens. And that's where it that's why it's so satisfying. And like And also it, just one minor thing, like this old man reminded me strongly of how like people at the bustling city would like shove themselves through like the open train doors right yes the, the yeah. disruption there the old man also had like the radio on and all this kind of stuff so it was for me like because she sat behind him for a moment then like he was like loud and he was like uh, fanning air to himself and so on and she was she, she got up and looked for a different seat yeah. yeah i think something about that old man reminded her too much of the like, kind of the city that then maybe in her cause like oh maybe i don't want this that's uh-huh. that's, a, that's a good detail. Well, anyway, mm-hmm. speaking of resolutions and yes. uh, abrupt yep. uh, endings, uh, I th- uh, I think if we've uh, set our piece and uh, yes, uh, I, I don't know about you, but like I I think I appreciate a lot of things about this movie that I didn't before, and that's exactly what I love about this podcast. Oh yeah, so uh, so thanks for having us all here on your channel, Nyard. Um, of course, wait. always. Thanks for helping me get good videos on my channel with me only having to do one fifth of the work. Yay. Yeah, that's, yep. that's great. Uh, also th- also, and also moderating. Yeah, also thanks for helping me install the stupid fucking mic. <laughs> Thank you, Plato, yeah. for moderating. Yeah. And I would like to compel our viewers to, if you wanted to like talk to us and discuss our takes on Ghibli films and pitch in yeah. some of our own ideas, we have a Discord link in the description on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube. We also, by the way, always offer an MP3 download is also in the description of the of the YouTube because I know not everyone is listening to podcasts always on their on their PC or whatever or can stream it on their phone. And also we have a Patreon. And if you like this, please consider supporting us. We will all like invest this money straight back into the podcast, getting some of our other people who want to be on better mics and helping out with general like equipment and so on. So yeah, it's, it's very much appreciated. Smash that mm-hmm. like button, sub bell things, all of that. Don't. Yeah, hit the This bell, is going to be the first time this is said on my channel and you did it. Wow. So I didn't do it. <laughs> well, should, well, I guess you should not have made me the moderator then. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you're fine. I appreciate it. Yep. Well, I, th- uh, I think that's uh, 
that's uh, that's gonna be it. So I hope everyone has like a uh, good life and good memories. Yeah. So thank you all for listening. Uh, catch you on the next one. Bye. 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 Bye.